Kuria, Erico Paca, Keprente, Kepente, Caparaca Pepato, Aperia Capato, Cobre Capete Capo. Can you begin to thank him? Can you thank him for making you a man? Can you thank him for making you a woman? A Necapara Soco Pente Caprata Caria Pacato Sapai, and the Cante Bruca. I'm the Sasso Sabay, I'm the Pepo de Cante Braca Pete Capapa, I'm the Catuaca Pemperia Sapata Cape, and the Catebraca Pete Capapa Poataya, I'm the Cata Zimpentuco Semper Capete Capoa, and the Catapon de Capraca Pete Capaya, I eat a capa 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 capa, I'm the Catapa papa 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 papa, I'm the Catapraca Pete Capapa papa papa, I'm the Cata. Prata capepua capapua, and the catebra capete capapa papa papa, and the cataria tea to a saca papa. Oh, my God! Can somebody pray? Can somebody pray? Can somebody pray? Can somebody pray? There is a high place that we need to travel to tonight. There is a place we need to draw wisdom from tonight. So, can you begin to ascend? Can you gain ascendancy? Can you 
begin to travel with God. Can you allow the Holy Ghost to lead you, lead you by the hand? Can you allow the Holy Ghost to lead you? Can you allow the Holy Ghost to lead you, 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 to lead you. He can guide you into all knowledge, into all truth, into all understanding. He can bring you into our lost palacletos. He can bring you into wisdom, ancient wisdom that is ancient, more ancient than your grandfather, more ancient, ancient wisdom. Can you begin to talk to Jesus? Can you call upon him? 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 It's only him that can direct your path. Can you begin to commit your ways, your ways, your ways? Can you commit your ways? Can you co commit your ways? So that your path can be guided. So that your path can be guided. So that your navigation can be guided. Is a tapata cura pataka vemperata capilacusa, a secate braca peteca pateca tacusa, a yaka penteca branta cavimparata, a pete prata capilla cota branti capasiata, a berete cavimbenta caldosa capepa, a yita papa papa, a pipa papa, a pipa papa, a pipa papa, a pipa papa, a becate branta capilla toa, ifa papa cate branca pete. Kapai, <laughs> Pa rata ka pempere, and the katep 
Then he say he makes I must look like right now. I'm the Kateparata Kapela Kupa Raka Pedaha and the Kateparaka Pitika Papa Papaya. I'm the Kataparaka Pitika Papa Kapo. I'm the Kosa Papa Kapa Papa and the Kateparaka Pendaka Papa Kapa. I'm the Kateparaka Pedaka Papa Papa Papa. I'm the Kupa Pampe here. A Piata Tabranta Cup and the Cup and Peria Capeta Papa Papa. I'm the Kateparaka Pitika Papa Papa. I'm the Kataprakam Pete Kapento Kapapai, Ikarata Karia Kapemperia, oh my God, a para para para. Et de capo, et peria catapo, et peria capata capo, a para catem and pecata braca pete capapai, e catapa catapa catapa. My brother, exercise your spirit, exercise your spirit. I will come to you, I will say some things later, but for now, exercise your spirit, and the catapra capete capapatia kai, and be he capa pumping capranta capa beda, e parata pumpe catapra capete capapai, e carata capa papai. I'm the cat that brought the cup of papa kai. He can't stop here now. I'm the cat that pumped the cup of papa. I'm the cat that brought the cup of papa. I'm the cat that brought the cup of papa. I'm the cat that brought the cup of papa. I'm the cat that brought the cup of papa. I'm the cat that brought the cup of papa. I'm the cat that brought the cup of papa. I'm the cat that brought the cup of papa. I'm the cat that brought the cup of papa. I'm the cat that brought the cup of papa. I'm the cat that brought the cup of papa. I'm the cat that brought the cup of papa. I'm the cat that brought the cup of papa. I'm the cat that brought the cup of papa. I'm the cat that brought the cup of papa. I'm the cat that brought the cup of papa. I'm the cat that brought the cup of papa. I'm the cat that brought the cup of papa. I'm the cat that brought the cup of papa. I'm the cat that brought the cup of papa. I'm the cat that brought the cup of papa. I'm the cat that brought the cup of papa. I'm the cat that brought the cup of papa. I'm the cat that brought the cup of papa. I'm the I'm the Katapranka Penakura Baya. I cannot be a shadow of myself. I'm the Katapranka Kapaya. A pea papua. I'm the Katapapampa. A pea cup and a cup of pump. A pea cup and a cup of rock. A pea cup of pie. A yea papa. I'm the Katapapapa. I'm the Katapapapa. A pea cup and pepper. A pura cup and a cup of pie. I'm the Katapraika. I'm the Katapraika. A pea cup. Cup and penny, a cup and the cup of papa, a cayo cuba, a micuparata, come the catebrante capai, a pipa papa, a catepapa cuta, a decatebraca pete capapa, a catua cape contempente capa, a decatebrante capentepera, a decatapapa popoecai, no lot hepovina, epina, a decatebranta capina capotai. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. We're going to pray. Welcome to day three of the Brothers and Sisters Conclave. Um, we're going to pray. We're going to pray that God will, will empower us with the right tools that we need. We equip us with the right components that is needed to be a man, and to be a woman, and to be a wife, and to be a husband. It is not all male that are husbands, and it's not all female that are wives. The Bible not say who find a, a lady. It say that find a wife. That is to say, before she was married, she wasn't a wife. She wasn't a wife. There are tools that she already have that made her a wife. Before she was married. Amen. If you find her, <laughs> you find a good thing. But if you find a lady that is not a wife, you may be the reason why you cry. And these things like tones and tistles, they may be your reality because those are products of rebellion. It is when Adam and Eve rebelled against God that this verdict came upon the earth. This was not the original design. Now, what we press for is for the original design that it be on us as it was, uh, the way it was before the fall. Amen. You know, when people want to marry, they teach them much about endurance, teach them about patience, teach them about long suffering. And the truth is that that is not the only syllabus that is, that is there in marriage. Marriage is not a place where people go and suffer. It's not a bad, it's not a carry prison. It's not supposed to be a place that when you want to go, all you are thinking about is how you can enjoy. You, you are not going to suffer. If, you, if it is suffering, then let us forget about it. We are not going to die. We are going to... Oh, Marono Kove Labateni. <laughs> My God. <laughs> how can something that God says is a good thing become the reason why everybody is afraid? It's because we married men that are not yet equipped. 
marry boys instead of men, marry some ladies instead of wife. We are going to pray that there is an equipping. There is an upgrade. There is a, there is a way. There is something that needs to come upon us. So that we can look like solution. But before we begin to pray those prayers, we need to first pray. There was a letter that Apostle John wrote to young men. He said, I write unto you, young men, because you are strong and you have overcome the wicked one. There is an, an overcoming capacity that is in the young man. That if you don't overcome while you are young, there is no hope to overcome again when you are old. The ability to overcome is in the strength. So if you are a youth and you are weak, it's an aberration. You are not yet a youth, you are a child. And children don't need to be thinking about marriage. They need to be thinking of how they can find pampas. You see, weak men, weak men that are struggling with addiction, struggling with people that cannot forgive themselves after 16 years when they were raped. They have not been able to forgive themselves. They want to marry. If you can't forgive yourself, who you can you forgive? It's the man that you married. You can't forgive. You have not been able to, to let yourself live again since you made one mistake 15 years ago and you want to marry a man. So that you can cage him and kill him. No, you don't need a husband. What you need now is help from God, Holy Ghost. You need another baptism. You need, you need Jesus. You need a beginner's class, not spouse. So if that is you, forget about husband. Huh? And pray. We are going to pray. You just pray for some minutes and say, Lord, whatsoever is needed for me to be a young man, whatsoever. How can they say young men, they have strength, yet I am weak. Before we choose the mic, it's not because we can no longer do anything in life. We were useless in life. Now we choose mic. Mic was the last option. No, it's because it was a calling. You no, know, we can do many other things. We were not weak in our mind. We were not weak. But can you begin to pray? Talk to Jesus. Talk to Jesus. Talk to Jesus. Whatsoever requirement that it takes to be a young man. He said, he said, for the young men shall see vision. And the young he said, your young men, your sons and daughters shall prophesy. How can you call yourself a young man? You said you are son and daughter, and yet you are blind. And you are looking for a spouse. Make a You are finding from social media. And the caparata cape. It is not difficult to find the right person if you are inside your ordination. Because the sons and daughters, they have eyes that sees, they have ears that hears, they have hearts that understand, they have senses that perceive, they are led about. He said, We lead them about. It's called Sabab. You have not mastered the hearing. You have not mastered the voice of God. You are waiting to marry. It is in marriage you want to hear it. What you have not heard before, you want to start hearing. From who, you, who is the man? Who is the man? That's why you want to start hearing. You are not yet a son. You are not yet a daughter. Because young men, they see visions. Young men, they dream. Young men, they prophesy. Young women, they prophesy because they are strong. There is something that makes them young men not bears. It's not their chest that make them young. And they He said, I write unto you young men because you are strong. If you are not strong, you might be young, but you are not a man. And they You are many things, but not a man. A young man is strong. And the is strong against temptation. He's strong when it comes to the devil. Because he have overcome the wicked one and the catampanto sabante capaya. Papai, 
I hope you are praying. I hope, I hope. I hope you are not wasting your time. That brother that is sleeping there, give him a slap. Let him wake up and pray. And the he don't have any rights to sleep. And the whatsoever requirement that makes men young in God, that make men strong in God, that make men wise in God, whatsoever, whatsoever requirement. Can you pray? I'm not hearing people pray. Can you pray? Hey, 
the beauty of a woman is not in miracle and the catapaya is in the gentle and the teachable spirit and the catabra catapaya is not in double master's degree it's a gentle and a teachable spirit if you cannot be taught you are useless for marriage you can be good in many things but don't marry don't marry don't stress anybody and the catapra capenia and the married men don't need to be confused man confusion is not needed in marriage you need direction as a father you need direction as a husband if you cannot be wise don't marry I'm a so can you cry and say whatever tools I'm a cry whatsoever tools that is needed to be a man to be a man to be a woman whatsoever tools and the katapante kabranta kabi and the katabranta kabi Hey, hey, hey. My brother, take advantage that you come early and pray early. Aparata kapena kapanda kateria. They said, Dotan became mighty because he prepared his way before the Lord. And the kataparaka pena. Those that plan to prepare in the days of war, they will be casualties. And the kataparaka pena. Who told you you need to be in marriage to learn? And the kataparaka pena. You can learn now. You can learn now. Oh my brother, can you pray now that God will equip you with tools? And I don't know why I'm praying because I need marriage. It's not a marriage conference. But I don't know why. I don't know why. Don't pray now. Pray, pray, pray. barata kapi. Why are you looking for a sister that has long suffering? Why do you want to carry bad character into the house? Why don't you pray now that God will take away the bad character? That people don't need to come to your, to your home and try to manage with you. Try to endure. Try to understand you. No, they don't want to understand. Do away with bad character now. Can you pray now? Pray now. And the and the Oh Lord, equip me with the tools. I'm the catapante. Take away the excesses. Are you praying? 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 You came early, so pray. Pray. Let me hear you pray. Pray, pray, pray. Pray, pray, pray. Pray, pray, pray. I cut up Ranta Covenberry. Ila Barakata Branta Kaliboko Brante Kate, a Periaka Papa Pata Kariboko Brante Kai, a Liparata Kapen to Korapata Kapena Kutsa, a Periaka Pemperiaka Tapana Katokopri, a Yeta Pemperica Papa Papa Pai, a Piaka Pereka Peteka Pepe Pepe Pepe, Ila Vampiri. Oh Lord, show me my place, give me my weapon, teach me my skill, and the Katabranta Kabe, not too home for. Function under the same principles. I make a papa pie. Every home is idiosyncratic. Everyone is unique to themselves. You must learn your tools. You must master your weapon. I make a tambranta capella. I make a pemperia capella pronto. I make a papa capella catala. I make a tambranta calibo. Oh, sister, if you need to pray, pray. There was a character. There was something that said I have. She was not taught in marriage. I don't think she went to marriage class, but she knew how to call her husband Lord. Even when the Lord will make hard decisions, and the karatandebo, I kapanteria makambelo, I aja, and the katabranka pepaya, and the kaprante kapaya. Oh sister, your tongues can take you far, but bad character will take you more backward. And the kadamre the kubena, and mira pranta limo kaima. Happy Papua Kanteria Bahe.
In Jesus' name. We are going to pray. I want us to take this prayer point very serious. Listen. When we tell Christians to marry the will of God for their life, it's not because we want the marriage to last. That's why. You don't need to marry the will of God for the marriage to last. There are many abalis that are still in their marriage after 70 years, 50 years, 60 years. It does not need to be the will of God for it to last. Normally, any Christian that is in a marriage, eh, the marriage is supposed to last. If a, two Christians marry, even though it's not the will of God, they're supposed to have sense enough to make it last. Listen. If paravation is not working, eh, it's because there are people inside that are not Christians. Not because it's not the will of God. On that matter, we are not trying to probe the will of God. We are trying to probe Christianity. Are you following me? Are you with me? The normal Christian life. Have you not, are you not surprised that the Christian that slapped his wife or beat his wife or insult the husband, that same Christian cannot insult the boss. Have you not observed it? It's because they think that there is nothing to lose. That's why they are careless concerning marriage. The reason why we tell people to marry the will of God is so that they can fulfill spiritual destiny together. Not because so that the marriage will last. Any Christian that married is supposed to be able to keep a home. Because love endures all things. Bear it all things. Hold pet all things. Love don't give up. It cannot. It bears to the end. No matter how bad it is, love endures all things. We are going to pray. There are tools that we need. The Bible says, let your light so shine. There is a way your light will shine. Your home will shine. Your business will shine. That it will become the reason why people want to marry. That when they see you marry, they long to marry. Not, hey, my copy. I was in a denomination some time ago. Somebody said something. The pastor preached and preached and preached. And he said, there will not be marriage in heaven. Thank God. And all the members shouted, thank God. The pastor said, Abby, you won't marry for heaven. He said, if they say me, you carry this to your wife and your husband, go ever, you go like, and everybody say, God forbid, in a denomination. If marriage is that bad, then let, let us not marry. If it is a problem, let us avoid it. He said, it's on that place, the Lord command the blessing. He said, how good and pleasant it is. There is a place that brethren can dwell. I am a copy. There is a friend that stick it closer than a brother. That one, I am a recommend. Hey, it is there the blessing is. We need tools. We need tools. We can't enter those battlegrounds with empty hand. You enter with expectation and wishes and go naked and become a burden. Why do people need to bear with you? Why do you want to be a problem that they need to bear? We go as salt, we go as light. We go to change situation, we go to add value. We don't go as parasites to withdraw. I don't know why I'm saying this. Is. We are going to pray. Give me Second King 6. I don't know why I'm saying those things. Second King 6. Second King 6 1. Okay. And the sons of the prophet said to Elisha, See now, the place where we dwell with you is too small for us. Give me an address. Let us, please let us go to the Jordan and let every man take a beam from there and let us make there a place where we may dwell. So he answered them and said, go. The next verse, they said, okay, you will go with us and he followed them. My emphasis is that the place you are currently is too straight for you. Don't, don't, so, not everybody, for many of us. That place is too straight. It's too small for you. You have not been able to accommodate you, so you need an enlargement. Don't gather people into that place that is not enough for you to dwell. That mentality, that unforgiveness is too, you don't need to bring somebody else into that place. You need to enlarge your coast. You need to enlarge your, your thinking faculty. You need to enlarge the way you see life before you bring somebody into that space. So that you don't become a problem. He said the place we dwell with you is too straight. We need to enlarge it. That is the burden, the only burden that I carry here tonight. That we need to pray for an enlargement. 
enlargement in the way we see life enlargement in our finances enlargement in our spiritual life it is not, it's not in marriage that we learn how to pray we pray well first before we marry you and your children don't need to learn prayer at the same time you need to pray first you need to learn prayer first this prayer life is too small it's too straight for you and your wife to share can you pray now and say look enlarge me enlarge me in the spirit there are some space that I need to cover there are some dimensions I need to guard there are things I need to find enlarge me We need to pray for spiritual enlargement. We need to enlarge our faculty. We need to enlarge our heart. We need to be able to contain, to bear, to understand. We need to understand the way of leadership. We need to pray that the Lord enlarge our leadership skill. <laughs> The greatest skill of a man in marriage is not his, his back balance, it's his leadership skill. If he cannot lead, he's not a man. Can you pray that the Lord enlarge you? That the Lord enlarge. Enlarge your vistas. He make you to see accurately. He make you to see well. He make you to understand well. He make you to have enough finance to get enlargement on all aspect of life. On all aspect of life. Can you pray that the Lord enlarge you? That the Lord enlarge you that you become a solution. That the Lord enlarge you that you become an answer to the prayers of generation. I oh my God, I am a cutter. Iparata cup in Piria and the Catepa Papa and the Catepra Capeta Pai and the Catapande Cobra Capepa. I am a member Catapa Papa Yaka. Can you pray? Can you pray? I don't know why the Lord is, is leading me through this direction, but that is what I feel like to pray. That is what I feel like to pray. That is what I feel like to pray. Can you pray for enlargement? Now the Lord enlarge you, enlarge your mind, enlarge your faculty, enlarge your thinking, enlarge your work with him, enlarge you, enlarge you, enlarge your finance, enlarge you, enlarge your spiritual life, enlarge your prayer life, enlarge you. Are you back at there was a man called Moses. He was so focused in the spirit that what he had was taken and given to 70 prophets, 70 elders, and they prophesied. Yet Moses is not depleted in value and essence. He still remained Moses you knew. Some people enter into marriage and they break and they become another man, a strange kind of species. It's because they were not robust enough in the spirit so the oil they have they could not share but there is an oil that you can share and that oil don't run dry there is a, there is a river that out of our belly can flow and nations can benefit the more they draw for me the more it become fresh the more they draw the more it become fresh can you cry for an enlargement there is an enlargement that need to come upon you There is an enlargement. There is an enlargement. 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 A spiritual enlargement. That your borders of habitation is too slim. It's too straight. It's too straight. That your mentality will frustrate a dream. That your mentality that you want to be Lord and God over her. That mentality will dwarf all ambition and purpose. That mentality is too straight it's too straight it's too small it's too small can you cry for an enlargement oh my god brothers pray brother pray the Lord can enlarge the boundaries of your habitation. He can enlarge the boundaries of your habitation. He can make you robust in the spirit. He can make you robust in the spirit. The Bible said the heart of Solomon was as large as the sand of the seashore. It was a robust heart. A heart that can contain. Da, da, da. 
oh sister, can you pray? Can you pray? You are not a wife if you cannot forgive. I came to pray for other matters, but the body came upon me. I'm the catabrante cabula. Ezi barata capena kusaba. Eberia capete capepe paya. Aya barata capena tansi. Aya jajajaja braca pena capapaya. I'm the catapaya. There are things, there are things that is a posture that we must have, that we must have. Oh my brother, pray. Pray, pray. It is, it is not wise to marry a young man who cannot hear God. It's a disaster. It's a disaster. The only time we heard that there was argument between Abraham and Sarah, what solved it, it was because Abraham could hear God. When Sarah came and said, send this woman and I shied away, Abraham said, no, no, no. No, no. And when the Lord spoke, he said, do as your wife have said. What kind of woman is that that don't hear God? What kind of useless wife is that? And the catabrante, and the catparasa. That is to say, Sarah did not speak emotionally. She spoke because she heard. She spoke because she heard. And when Abraham inquired, he said, do what your wife said. Your wife have heard well. And a parata copy. Oh, brother, you can still hear God. You can. You can. Sister, you can still hear God. A sinner, a year in year. It's the Lord that give them both. You can still hear. You can still hear. To find a life partner is not that difficult. It is a bar. He will guide you. I am a copy. And the ketepa. He will lead you about. He will lead you about. He will lead you about. About. So many of us don't understand the speakings of the Spirit. We don't understand the speakings of the Spirit. So when the Lord is leading you, He's giving you an impression you are waiting for the day you want to cast a scroll with the name of a brother. You are a clan. You will wait for a long time because you don't know how the Spirit moves. You don't know the way of the wind. You don't know the pathways of the Spirit. Can you pray now and say, Lord, I am available to be taught. You can still guide me. You can still teach me how to hear. I am not too old to learn. I am not too old to Learn, I am para. Your children will want to survive from your work with God. It is those things you have trapped that you will share for your children. It is those reality that Abraham have that Isaac benefited. It was then that even Jacob came years after and he obtained things from them. I am You need to find something. Dig a well so deep that after 300 years Isaac can find that well and draw and draw. I am Oh Lord, enlarge me. Enlarge me, enlarge me. A good man does not leave a car behind. He leaves something stronger than the car. He leaves inheritance for grandchildren. He leaves something strong. But I pray. You can see here, God. The life of a man is not anything if he cannot, if he cannot hear God. The reason why man was created in the image and it's like that so that man can contact, contain and express God. If you cannot contain God, if you cannot contact him, you are a disaster no matter how you are in ministry, in anywhere, you are a disaster. In Jesus' name we pray. Okay, the Lord just went to pray something in my heart that we to pray about. <laughs> Amen. This prayer is funny to me somehow. Because this is not what I'm planning to pray, but we pray. Since the Lord said we should pray, we will pray. Amen. We're going to pray. You know when they want to anoint David as king, when they rejected Saul, 
The Lord said, go to the house of Jesse, and I, will, I have anointed me a prophet from the house of Jesse. He said, so go fill your home with oil and go to the house of Jesse and anoint me a king. And when he got there, he saw Eliab, the first son, and he wanted to pour the oil. The Lord said, I have rejected him. He did not say, this is not the prophet. That is this not the king? That is to say, Eliab was initially suggested. Maybe he was suggested in heaven before. It was not that I did not choose him. I rejected, so I have rejected. You must first be picked before you can be rejected. Have he? <laughs> he not gave the reason. He said, because men look at the art world, and God look at what? I want to tell you a simple story. God is the only one that can look at your heart. The Bible said the heart of a man is desperately wicked above all things. Say, who can what? He not say spiritual man can know it. Say, who can know it? That even as you are building spiritual capacity, eh? I cannot see spiritual capacity. All I can see is what my eye can see, the outward. You want a man to marry you, or you want a sister to marry you, and all that you are laboring for is the spiritual. Now, the outward we cannot see. The man will look at where? You may not answer me, but man will look at the what? I don't know how to, I don't have a eye that can look at the inward. I will look at the word outward, and I will ask God what He has seen in the inward so that God can tell me what is inward. So when we combine outward and inward, we will find the what? There are many people that God has spoken. The brother have not made a move yet after seven years. Because the outward is too bad that the brother prefer to die single than to marry that inward. The outward don't forgive. I come on to be. That the brother made a vow that if this woman not change, I don't go talk. I don't go, I die single. I'm not my other person, but I will die single. Than to follow this outward that I don't understand. The outward is complicated, very, very complicated. So I'm going to pray. That oh Lord, even as I'm working on my inward, eh? do work on my outward. Do work on my outward. Maybe I'm talking too much. Eh? Mm, I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to myself. Maybe, maybe. Eh? If God is working on my prayer life, He need to still work on my character. He still he need to work on my finance too. He's too the finance is too bad. It's too bad now that no, it's not attractive to anybody. That if God is working on the world, let Him also do what? Can you make that your prayer? Because men will not come into the spirit of people. They will look at what they can see. What they can see is do nothing. Nothing every morning, every night, quarrel here and there. He don't forgive. Argue about everything. I am a katan brante kove. Ami kabam peria kapari. Ei makute bara. Ene kete branta kalibo. Ei abante kapai. Say Lord, as you are walking on my inward, walk on the outward too. Walk on the outward too. The spirit might be. Weak. Willing, but it takes the spirit and the bride to say, Come, I am a captain Brante. The Lord might say, This is the one, but the brother might say, I don't agree with that one. And the catabrante kata because of the outward, the brother become rebellious. And the parata capena a libra tacabrante. The sister become rebellious. You don't want to agree with the will of God because the will of God is not looking like the will of God. And the reapa cape, my brother, pray, pray that Lord. That you are walking on my inside, walk on my outside too. And the capanteria pie, and the cape papai, and live a peria capapai, and the copai. My outside need a torch. My my caution, my talking, my behavior, my character, my finance, my kayemo, my gene, they need the torch. They need the torch. They need the my yabarai. My character need the torch. Can you be sincere and pray? <laughs> we don't have very long time to pray again. Can you pray sincerely for the next 10 minutes and say, Lord, as you are walking on my inside, please walk on my outside too. Walk on my outside too. As you are walking on the things that cannot be seen, walk also on the things that can be seen. Because people will measure the things that cannot be seen by the things that they can see. People will measure the spiritual by the physical. As you are walking on my inside, oh Lord, do a walk on my outside. As you are walking inside, walk outside too. People will measure me by the lights they can see. Not by the lights they think. But the world they can see. Can you pray? 
If men, don't, if men don't see good work, they cannot glorify my Father in heaven. There is something that must shine. There is an aura. There is an, there is an effulgence. There is an ambience. There is something that they, they must see for them to know that I carry God. Can you pray and say, Lord, as you walk on my inside, walk also on my outside. As you walk on the invisible, walk also on the visible. As you walk on the terrestrial, I am a carry more. Walk on those things that men can see. Can you pray sincerely? If you cry, the Lord will hear. If you call upon Him, He will hear. That bitterness, that bitterness, that anger, that anger, that if they don't own you, you will kill a lot of people. I am a kate brantelemo, and ye barata kate. As God is working on your prayer life, it should touch that anger too. And ne kata pampre, and ye tapa pariate, and ye periaka pepe. That greed, that greed, that greed, that greed, and ne kata branto kopena, and ye periaka papa pai, and vim barata kambelo sakate, and ye tapa papa pai, and ye brata kambelo saita. Can you pray, 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 and say, Lord, do a work on my outward man, I'm the kataba. My outward man need maintenance. He need a routine check. He need repair. He need an amendment. Oh Lord, work on my outside, even as you work on the inside. <laughs> And Ramada Kali, before Esther ever stood before Azaros, she undergo purification for a long time. She undergo purification for a long time. And a pantekora pai, and the keteparata kabe, aye parata kabe. Don't walk, don't go and stand before Azaros with a strange garment. And the katapai with the old man, with the old man, old garment. And the korapa kate that even as inside is changing, outside must be worked on. Outside must be worked on. Outside must be worked on. Can you pray? Ura pa katepa, ele katepa pa pa pa, ela tá cante pronto com feba, aí para cá pem peria sacata pa pa pa, aí por o copé pa 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 tá cá feba, aí aí para cá pe tá cá pa, a rapa tá cá pa pa, a rata suta pa ta, a pria cá pe tá cá pa pa pa, aí para o copé pem ele cante pronto cá pa pa, a nica pa te pronto cá pa, aí para tá cá pa pa, aí 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 para tá let my inward Christianity change what I, the way I live. Let it change the way I dress. Let it change the way I talk. Let it see, change the way I perceive life. Let that thing that is working inside, let it be demonstrated outside. Let it find expression. Can you pray? Can you pray? Many people claim to be Christian. I am Paratapa. But a man Shebe said, he said integrity is the, is the ability of a man to reject every every iota of compromise even at the point of tyranny and opposition if you cannot start when it is tough then you are not strong anyway you have not been standing that which is working on my inside. Oh Lord, give it ventilation so that it can find expression on my outside. <laughs> A prayer man who fights in the market is not an advantage. No. That if it is inside, what is inside need to come out. We measure what is inside by what we can see outside. That if there is nothing outside, we believe nothing is there inside. You cannot say you are a man of fire and we cannot see character. We cannot see traces of that thing you say is working inside. And my God, he said if the Lord is at working in you, he said he will make you to will and to do. He will affect what you think and what you do. If it is the Lord that is at work in you, it will work in your doing and your willing. What you will and what you do will be affected by that which work in you. Pray. Oh my God. Arimo kofe la bante, agi barata kabela, 
Can you pray? The right kosho, the kosho to be cultivated, the character, the character, the character that makes a man, the character that makes a woman. A man is not made because of his because of his private part. He's made by because of what he has with God. If a man cannot contact God, if he cannot contain God, he might be a strange species. Because the reason we are made is that we can contain God, we can contact God, and we can express Him. And the kataparata kapila, and the kataparaso takapina, and the kataparia kapapa. Oh my God! Can you pray? And if you are truly contacted God, if truly you contain God, then you need to express God. You need to unveil God. You need to reveal God. That God needs to be demonstrated. That which is inside needs to be to, need to find expression outside. Can you pray? Can you pray? Can you pray? Lead us along eternal highway. We want to follow the full step of Jesus. We want to enter your realm. Can we cry? Can you pray for the ancient part? There are parts that are ancient. Can you pray? Can you pray? Can you pray? The Bible says, look unto your father Abraham and unto your mother Sarah. There is something that God worked upon them. They had issues, they had mistakes, but they found God. And that which they found, they, they left it in the sand of time. That generation later, they could find that which Abraham found. Can you pray and talk to Jesus? Can you cry and talk to the Lord? And the kaparata kembarasa, that whatsoever you are working on my inside, give it expression on my outside. That my inside will not say I am holy, while my outside has littered, and bad characters littered everywhere. Make sure you are praying tonight. Make sure you are praying. Zephra Sabara Tavina Cadis Shadabara Cobresu Zafana Tabaratos Jesus 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 Brava Zusa Baracade Baliano Tabresa di Valacatae We come tonight, O oh God, asking for your help. That out of our lives, oh God, you will bring out your best. Can you pray for yourself tonight? Pray for yourself tonight. That the Lord will walk a great walk, a great walk, a great walk, a great walk. Pray that the Lord will walk a great walk. A great walk, a great walk. A sabara tamana kabira su sabara kade. Shabarabosa da balanante cruza baratadi. That he will begin to make you into a real man. Make you into a woman that is beautiful indeed. That the making of the Lord will yield results. Some of us, God has been dealing with us on certain matters and the Lord has not succeeded. It's been years, it's been months. It's been weeks. Can you ask that the Lord will succeed with you? He will succeed with you. He will succeed with you. He will succeed with you. Beg the Lord tonight. Say, Lord, Lord, whatever work you need to do, whatever you need to perfect, whatever, oh God, you need to sharpen, whatever tools you need to put in my hand, I'm here tonight. 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 Oh, show us the ancient past. Lead us along eternal highways. We want to fall. 
Know the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. We want to follow, want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Show us the ancient. Lead us along, eternal. Oh, oh, we want to end. personalize it now. I want to follow. One more time, show me the ancient path. Lead me along, eternal. Oh, I want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. I want to enter His realm. I want to follow. Jesus name we have prayed and we have worshiped tonight you may be seated hallelujah hallelujah please feel free to welcome someone by your side to the tent tonight let them know that you are glad that they are here despite the heavy downpour we have made it here, and we trust that God will bless us tonight in the name of Jesus. We have in our midst the senior pastors of the Heritage Assembly Worry, <laughs> Pastors Efe and CJ Okoro. Can we give them a big God bless you and a hand clap? Praise God. So tonight is the grand finale of our brothers and sisters conclave and we are trusting Jesus that tonight there will be a great move of his spirit. We've had a great time since Monday, uh, Tuesday and then tonight we trust that the Lord will put a seal on it. So tonight by the grace of God if you have specific needs that you want us to join you in prayer for there will be impartation, there will be prayers, uh, there will be prophesying. By the time we are wrapping up, and we trust God that he will show us mercy. That and prayers will be answered speedily in the name of Jesus. As I meditated, I don't know, the Lord kept speaking up to me about a woman that feels abandoned. Abandonment. I kept hearing that in my spirit. The Lord will bring you great comfort tonight in the name of Jesus. So what I'm going to do, 30, 35 minutes, I will teach briefly and then we'll move into the Q&A session. The question and answer session will be moderated by the brothers and, brother and sisters leader. And we have a great team to provide answers. And then when we are done, I will be back again to lead us to pray and then when we are done praying myself my brother his wife my wife all the pastors will now attend to specific prayer needs for singles if you feel that there is a pattern around your life you are due for marriage and nothing is happening we will shift you tonight in the name of jesus so if you've been around since we began on monday we've been trying to provide accurate representation of what it means to be a real man and what it means to be a beautiful woman. 
uh, the world has her definitions and the world has her expectations of what a man should look like or what a man should bring to the table and it also has its expectation of what beauty should look like uh, the challenge we have found in the body of Christ, especially in the Christian space, basically, is the waters as relates to uh, personality, as to relationships, as to marriages, have become very, very muddied. And like Pastor Ovi was leading us to pray, uh, a lot of Christians give the impression that they love God and uh, their work with God is rich, it is real, it is alive. But when it comes to these matters of giving credence to your Christian experience, we find that most people fall short. For instance, in the matters of uh, relationships with people, people who claim to be believers cannot even bear with other people who have character flaws or issues Christians are still angry. Christians are still wicked. Certain Christians are still uh, slanderous. Certain Christians cannot manage their emotions. Certain Christians uh, claim to be Christians on the inside. But when they present themselves outside, you are, you, you are left with a lot of questions as to whether this is still a believer. And like Ovie was saying tonight, God is the one that looks at the heart. What man looks at is the outward. If what has happened to you on the inside has not affected your outward, then there is something wrong with the Christianity that you say that you have. Your contact with God is supposed to have had a great impression on you and a great consequence on you that the presentation of your life in the public space should bear witness to transformation. But many Christians are not transformed. We bear the titles of being Christians, but when we are put under pressure, it becomes obvious that our contact with God did not translate to anything real. So many people are put off by the Christian. So all he has is what he claims he has on the inside. But let him open his mouth. He talks like the world open his mouth and you find out that he's thinking the, the ideologies or her ideologies by which she defines life is shaped by the thinking and the thought patterns of the world. Let them want to get married and you find out that the appetites that exist within their vessel are appetites that are drawn from the world. So it's obvious at this time when souls are perishing and people are thinking of how to conquer nations. We still need pastor's wives to inspect wedding gowns before sisters will come for wedding. Sisters that speak in tongues. If pastor's wives don't inspect the wedding gown, the sister will show up in church and the entire church might be embarrassed. Embarrassed. So it looks like there is so much... Uh, weight and depth in the spirit but when the people present themselves in public space it becomes obvious that our lives are lies god looks at the inward but man the bible says that we are epistles that are read of men what do men really read from us what do they read from us what do they read i'm being careful tonight because there's something that is boiling in my spirit if i touch it i will enter trouble so let me, let me leave it so that I will, be, I will still be safe. So I will still be safe. Because if I touch it, you will not understand why I'm touching it. You won't understand. So that's why I will leave it. But obviously, when certain situations present themselves, it becomes obvious that all we have is profession. We don't really have depth with God. And this is why... When you now enter this space of Christian relationships, whether it is courtships, whether it is friendships, whether it is marriages, you begin to find out that all the things that we have refused to deal with are the matters that become issues 
in our marriages. Because while you were a single brother, you were a single sister, you refused to present yourself to the Lord so that the Lord can weed your field. So that your field will actually produce the kind of things that God is looking for in the life of a Christian. So this is why we have taken our time, like I did on Monday, to show you who a real man is. We are not saying that you should, you should neglect your outer appearance and dress shabbily and not get a job and just be focused on your spiritual life. No, but the weight of what is happening to you on the outside should reflect the depth of what is happening to you on the inside. On the inside. My brother was saying on Sunday that people just wake up one, one day now in their marriages and say, I'm no longer in love with this person and the marriage has ended. Right now, even in Christian homes, Christians are, are working out of their marriages. Separation is on the rise. The discourse that is popular now is all about divorce. Christians are looking for excuse to walk away. To walk away. The same questions that they asked Jesus are the same things that are happening now. Because the question they came to ask Jesus is, can a man divide, divorce his wife for every reason? That was the question. It was not just a question about divorce. The matter was, is it everything that happens that I can take occasion of and divorce my wife? So Jesus had to bring it to their understanding that there was only one premise for divorce. Only one. And it was the occasion of adultery or fornication. Every other thing, if it is true that two Christians got married, if it is true that that relationship is being run by two Christians, if it is true, then the kingdom of God should be reaping profit from that relationship. Whether you are friends, whether you are in courtship, or whether you are in marriage. Whatever relationship, whether you are friends, whether you are in courtship, or you are in marriage, if it is two Christians that, is in, that are involved, we shouldn't be having issues. We shouldn't be having issues. So the reason the water is so muddied now, you, you look at this stream that is supposed to be flowing out of the church and blessing nations, is muddied. The first reason is the, the people that are within the enclave of the kingdom, the church, Christians, they are no longer sincere. They are no longer sincere. No longer sincere. People are, are faking their spiritual experiences. We are not people in the world that say fake it until you make it. No. In spiritual things, don't fake it until you make it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Because in spiritual matters, if you attempt to fake it, situations will arise in the future that will show that you don't have it. It will show you don't have it. We are not sincere. It, 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 it's a big issue. People lie about hearing God. And then when the marriage begins to face some form of storms, it now becomes obvious that you didn't hear God. You, didn't, you lied. These are the days when you are single that you sit down and get taught, how do I know the voice of God? How do I hear God? Learn it now. But people are waiting to be faced with 14 brothers that are asking them to, to marry them. And then that's when they want to do a crash course or not to hear how to hear God. They are running from bookshop to bookshop to, 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 to looking for titles, the still small voice. 17 steps to hear the voice of God. Hear God like a microphone. All the titles are on your, on your bookshelf. But meanwhile, in your daily living with God, all things, the day you got born again, the shepherd has been trying to train you to hear his voice and you have been resisting. And that is why the Bible uses the metaphor of shepherd and sheep. It's not automatic. From the day the sheep is brought into the fold, the shepherd begins to introduce syllables, introduce sounds, introduce communications that the sheep will become familiar with over time. We lie about hearing God. Sisters, brothers can hear God concerning marriage in three months 72 times and change relationships 80 times. 
And every time the relationship is changing, they are coming with new dreams, coming with new visions, coming with encounters and prophecies. We are not sincere. We are not sincere. And the implications are becoming obvious. The world is standing up aside and looking at us and wondering, are these people confused? Are they confused? People who have been married for 30 years, 40 years, just wake up and say, we are tired. Irreconceivable, I mean, what do they call it in English? Differences. After 30 years, Because you as a sister, you grew up in church, you see the brother leading prayers. Then when you enter the house with him, you now find out that this guy is not born again. We must stop acting. Young people, listen to me. If anything must happen to you on this last day of this conference, beg God that you don't want to be an actor. Don't be fake. Don't be fake. You see, one of the stories in the Bible, my brother, that breaks my heart is, is in 1 Samuel 25. We don't have the time. And you see, there's something boiling in my spirit. I'm trying to put myself under control so that I don't erupt. Hmm? It's not a day for crusade. If you read 1 Samuel 25, there's a story between that tells us, it, it begins at verse 2. It tells us the story of a man called Nabal and a woman called Abigail. Have you read that story before? Do you want us to read it? Okay, let's read it. It's a long read. Let's read it. Now there was a man in Maon whose business was in Camel, and the man was what? Very rich. He had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats, and he was sharing his sheep in Camel. Three. The name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife was Abigail. And she was a woman of what? And what? But the man was what? Evil in his doing. He was of the house of Caleb. You know, I read this thing, I've read this thing in various translations. Do you know when it says he was of the house of Caleb, certain translations say he was exactly like his heart. Are you with me? He was exactly like his heart. That this phrase that is translated was of the house of Caleb was not properly translated. That what that phrase actually means in the Hebrew is that he was like, exactly like his heart. But that's not the story. The question I always ask myself when I read this verse is, first of all, sure you know that when you read the Bible, the Bible is deliberate in the things that are being communicated. First, the meaning of the name Ab Nabal is fool. What did I say is the meaning? Fool as in ode, mumu, fool. The meaning of the name Abigail is father's joy. What did I say is the meaning of the name Abigail? Father's joy. The question I always ask myself is how did father's joy marry mumu? How did this pairing occur? How, how did it get to this point? What, what went wrong? I can never understand it because, you see, if you read this story, you will know that Abigail was not, was not the common woman on the street. She was not just like every girl. The way she intervened first, the way the servants came to meet her, they knew who was in charge in that house. They knew the man had the position, but the woman had the authority. She had the office in that house. They knew. And that is an aberration. In Christian marriages, the priest of the house is supposed to be the man. But when you as a sister go and marry because the man knows how to handle a microphone, when he holds microphone, he knows all the lingo in the apostolic and he can bend like this and bend his mouth. And then he begins to, and he says, there are constellations. Enoch visits me in the morning, Elijah in the evening, and then Solomon in the night. Because he has all the lingo and jack, you think that that is what attracts a woman or keeps a home 
And there's nothing wrong with jargons. Don't hear what I did not say. But there's something beyond the individual. When you get into the marriage, you might find out that you are the one now bearing the spiritual responsibility of the home. It's an aberration. But you see, I read this scripture, read this scripture, read this scripture, and I kept asking God, how did Father's joy find compatibility with Mumu? And you see, she knew her husband was a fool. You don't believe? I may not be able to find all the verses, but... Go to verse... Show me verse 4. Let's go quickly because we can't read everything. 5... Six, seven, eight, quick, 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 nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Now, see first here. Now, let me tell you the story of all the places that we jumped. David, you remember that David was not yet king here. Are you aware? He was not yet king. He was still running away from Saul. And because he was running away from Saul like a fugitive, he used to camp in places, take over certain places and be there with his men. And while he was there, Nabal was a very rich man, so he had men working for him, and he had flock, he had sheep. And sometimes shepherds were very vulnerable in those days. All right? So the rustlers could just come, attack them, take all their sheep, take all their stuff. So while these people were around the vicinity of David, neighbor's men and his sheep and his cattle, David gave them protection. Are you with me? So that nothing was lost. And David did not take occasion of the fact that he was a warrior to oppress the guys and take some of their sheep. He could have done that, but he did not. So David heard that Naba was going to share his sheep. You know what sharing of sheep means? Where you skin the sheep, you remove the fur so that you can use it to make coats and use it to do all that. They were going to share the sheep. And during sharing, sharing was like, come on, work on this sound, please. What are we doing? Sharing was like a festival. So during the sharing process, they would normally provide food, provide drinks, and everybody would come around to participate. So David heard that Nabal was carrying out that ceremony. So he sent his men to Nabal to say, please. He even said, tell him your son David is in need of supplies. Send us some things. And Nabal said, who is David? Who is the son of Jesse? Who is he that I should give him my meat? I should give him my drink? I should give him all of this. And the men went back and told David. And David said, I'm coming to destroy neighbor that no male will survive what is about to happen. When the young men that were there with Nabal head, they went home. The Bible says, now one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, look, David sent messengers from the wilderness to greet our master, and he reviled them, 15. But the men were very good to us. We were not hot. Nor did we miss anything as long as we accompanied them when we were in the fields. 16. They were a wall to us both day by night and day. All the time we were with them keeping the sheep. 17. Now therefore, know and consider what you will do. For harm is determined against our master and against all his household. For he is such a what? Scoundrel that no one cannot speak to him. If this was wrong, Abigail would have told the servant, come on, shut up. Don't speak about your master like that. Are you here? So she agreed with the servant. And this is just one of the places we are going for that. She agreed with the servant that indeed, this man is such a man that nobody can speak to. He's a scoundrel. He's like a wild animal. How did father's joy marry a wild animal? Is either the wild animal was pretending to be a sheep or father's joy was blinded by something else. Go back to verse 2. Go back to verse 2. We will come back. Remember where we are. We're in 17. Now there was a man in Moan whose business was in Camel and the man was what? 
I read this thing over and over asking the Lord, how did Father's Joy find herself in this thing? And the Lord highlighted that thing to me. The man was what? Very rich. He had businesses. He was rich. There's nothing wrong with wealth. But wealth in the hand of a fool, such a man should not be your husband. If you do not know what is important, and that's what this con conclave is about, focus on the things that are what? Important. Focus on the important things. A real man is not about his economic status. Can he cover me? Can he be a priest? Can he teach? Can he hear God? Is he visionary? Has he come to a place where he has put his life totally under the government of God? If I marry this man, where will we arrive in God? Some of you didn't listen to the prayers or some of you were, were not even praying. Say you know that when we marry as Christians, our problem is not just... The reason we are, we are pushing all these things is not so that you can be married for 70 years. Even unbelievers have long marriages. Eh? Unbelievers that dance Skelewu, that dance Igbe. Unbelievers that are sacrificing in many junctions. They have four wives and their homes. Eh? Some of them, the man is a proper manager of that home. And the marriages are lasting years. It's not longevity alone that is the matter. The matter is destiny. What will the kingdom reap? What will, will you be able to find your spiritual coordinates and fulfill the will of God in that marriage? That's the matter. So if you choose that you want to marry anyhow, we're not saying that your marriage will not be long. We're just saying that God will not reap reward from your life. The kingdom will not gain anything from that marriage. So your, there, there will be a record of you being born. There will be a record of you getting born again. But the years of marriage will be considered wasted years. Nothing for God to hold. Nothing for him to hold. So Abigail, we don't know. But that thing strikes my heart every time I read it. What was the thing that blinded her that she married this man? You see, in this conference, the thing that the Lord said I should tell you tonight before we begin to want to shift into Q&A fully so that we take all the questions we've not taken for two days is where is your blind spot? What is the thing right now that you are unwilling to lay down that... Like one sister was asking, telling us here yesterday, looking for counsel on how to help her friend. Say the guy must get moto. Say, this is my skin. My skin is not made for the sun. AC, blow me to church. AC, blow me in the house. That appetite might become your undoing. You will find yourself with a mumu. Whether male or female. Read further. Go to 18 now. We're in verse 18. We're in verse 18. Look at Abigail. Then Abigail, I want you to follow this story. Please, Raphael and Amanda, let me take 10 more minutes. Huh? Then Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves of bread, two skins of wine, five sheep already dressed. You know what we mean by already dressed? Not that they wore the sheep suit. They've cleaned it. You know, like when you kill chicken, you remove the feather, you remove the inside. That's dressing. Put apple in the mouth of the sheep. Five sears of roasted grain, 100 clusters of raisins, and 200 cakes of figs, and loaded them on donkeys. 19. And she said to her servants, go on before me. See, I'm coming after you. But she did not what? Oh my God. This is how secrets begin in marriage. When you know you are married to a Nabal, you can't trust that person with your life. Serious decisions in your life. Imagine as a, as, a, as, a, as a young man. You have serious situations in your life. You can't tell your wife. Because pray, not go pray. 
she might even compound the problems. Or you are a woman. Things are happening in your life. You are having dreams. You are having visions. You can't even share with your husband at home because you know that he doesn't think of the same wavelength with you. Have you met those kind of people? Everybody in the world will be thinking to the right. The minute they open their mouth, it is left. They their thinking is always affected by something that you can't describe. She refused to tell her husband. Next verse. Next verse. So it was as she rode on the donkey that she went down under cover of the hill and there were David and his men coming down, coming down toward her and she met them. 21. Now David had said, Surely in vain I have protected all that this fellow has in the wilderness so that nothing was missed of all that belongs him and he has repaid me evil for good. 22. May God do so and more also to the enemies of David if I leave one male of all who belong to him by morning light. 23. Now when Ab Abigail saw David, she dismounted quickly from the donkey, fell on her face before David and bowed down to the ground. 24. So she fell at his feet and said, On me, my Lord, on me, let this what iniquity be. This was an intercessor. How did an intercessor? You see, this thing she was doing, she was acting like a woman that had been spiritually educated. She was not acting like a novice. She appeared for, before David, not rolling on the floor. Not kill my children. Don't kill my husband. Please now. She went there and she was composed. She was spiritually educated. Where did this woman learn this thing? How did she know what to do to bring deliverance to her family? Meanwhile, you will see when we read further, the mumu was, was feasting, drinking wine. Drinking wine. I never understand it. And my prayer tonight is that you don't fall into this kind of trap. Whether as a young man, don't, don't go and marry a woman that has all the figures like my wife was saying yesterday, the figures are in the right places. The shape is like a Coke bottle. When you turn her like this, my God, she's, she spins. There's nothing wrong. But you see, if that is all that she has, and she doesn't know what to do when her family is under siege, you have married a liability. This was an intercessor. Remember, David was king. And this was a handmaiden. That is, the, that is a metaphor for Christ and the church. That's what you are saying there. She took a position of an intercessor. Raising petitions to God. Standing as a bridge between the king and his subjects. How do I know? Read further. Please, let not my Lord re regard who? This scoundrel, Nabal, she knew who her husband was. For as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. He's a foolish man. But I, your maid servant, did not see the young men of, the, of my Lord whom you sent. 26. Now, therefore, my Lord, as the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, since the Lord has held you back from coming to, committing blood, coming to bloodshed, and from avenging yourself with your own hand. Now then, let your enemies and those who seek harm for my Lord be as Nabal. Be as foolish as Nabal. Next verse, 27. And now this present which your handmaiden, your maid servant has brought to my Lord, let it be given to the young men who follow my Lord. 28. Please forgive the trespass of your maid, maid servant. For the Lord, listen, will certainly make my Lord a what? an enduring house because my lord fights the battles of the lord and evil is not found in you how throughout your day this is a woman speaking to david next verse yet a man has risen to pursue you and seek your life but the life of my lord shall not be bound in the bundle of the living with the lord your god shall be bound in the bundle of the living with the lord your god and the lives of your enemies he shall sling out as from the pocket of his sling. Next verse. 30. 30. 30. And it shall come to pass when the Lord has done for my Lord according to all the good 
that he has spoken concerning you and has appointed you what? She was not in doubt that this was God's anointed king. Saul was pursuing him to kill him. But this woman was a prophet. Abigail could peep into vistas in the spirit. She was not in doubt. She even began to, to cut covenant. Almost like she knew that this is an opportunity. Look at the next verse, 31. She says, that this will be no grief to you, no offense to, of the heart of, to my Lord. Either that you have shed blood without cause, or that my Lord has avenged himself. But when the Lord has dealt well with my Lord, then remember what? Your maid servant. She was saying, when you enter the palace, remember that I did good to you. How did father's joy, how did a woman like this end up with a man like that? How? I'm hoping that today, if there are things that are troubling you that you don't have answers to, ask. This is a training school. Ask now. Ask now. There are tons. There are tistus. Tons and tistus in the scriptures are symbols of the fallen nature. How do I know? Genesis 3 and verse 18. He says that because you have done this, the ground is no longer permitted to, you, to yield to you the crops that it was originally designed to yield. He says when you sow and you till the ground, it will now yield you what? Tons. And tistos. So tons and tistos were not the original products of the ground. Are you with me? Those were products that became possible because of the fall of man. And do you know what tons and tistos are? They are like elephant grass. Sure, you know elephant grass. You don't need to plant it. If it begins to find its way in your field, it will multiply itself. And it's very stubborn. That's how tons and tistos are. So if you go and read Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 30, the Bible says, I went by the field of a slothful man and I found out that it was overgrown with weeds. It was overgrown with what? Thorns. And the walls were what? Broken down. Scattered. Ask now. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 16, the Bible says, Can a man harvest grapes from thorns? Can a man harvest figs from tistos? So he was saying, grapes are the good fruit, tongues are the bad fruit. Figs are the good fruit, tistos are the, are the bad fruit. So tongues and tistos are representatives or representations of the fallen nature that you are pampering. And if you refuse to be sincere, you might become Nabal to an Abigail. If you refuse to be sincere, whether you are male or female, you may become Nabal to an Abigail. I weep many times. You don't know what certain Christians are going through in their marriage. I've seen grown men cry. They married her from church. She's a knife in his heart. She married him from church and entered the house and found out that he's, he's Satan's agent. Satan's agent. It's time to identify your blind spots. Be open. Don't be shy tonight. Today is the final day. We are going to be having these meetings consistently now by the grace of God because these are matters that must be dealt with. My wife is there. Pastor CJ is there. Pastor if is there. Pastor Oji is there. Pastor Mina is there. I am there. Be open. See the way the thing is. So I've told you a secret. There's a way to do this thing. Say, there's a man that lives in my compound. You're not lying now. Is he not inside your compound? You used to say. <laughs> huh? There's a man we went to the same secondary school. And this and this and this and this and this happened. Will we pretend like we do not know what you are saying? Will we give you answer? 
but don't leave here tonight confused don't leave here tonight confused bow your heads quickly I want you to beg God that tonight answer even my unspoken questions. Because even as people ask questions, answers that will be coming are not just for the person answering, asking the question, is even for those who are not asking. Tell the Lord tonight, answer my unspoken questions. Even the things, the answers I do not even know that I need. Please, Lord, put it in the mouth of your servants. I don't want to be Nabal. Can you be sincere tonight? I don't want to be Nabal. Lord, if there are tongues that I'm hiding, if there are tea stools that I'm pampering, walk on this field tonight. Come with a bulldozer. Come with sharp knives and circumcise us again. Tonight, Lord, Hit me hard. I want to hear truth. If there are things that I need to ask and I'm too shy to ask, give me boldness to ask it. But Lord, don't leave me the same way. Don't leave me the same way. I want to be a fruitful field. I shouldn't be bearing thorns when I'm supposed to be bearing grapes. I shouldn't be bearing tistools when I'm supposed to be bearing figs. Lord, walk on me tonight. Walk on my, on my thought life. On my emotions. Walk on me tonight. Walk on me tonight. Walk on me tonight. Don't get married and begin to fight unnecessary battles, dear brother. There is more to a woman than figure eight. I tell you the truth. There is more to a man than six pack and biceps. You want a man that can, you can look up to and say, yes, this is a priest. Come on, keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. You have three minutes to exercise your spirit. Prepare your heart for what God is about to release. I told you tonight, it's not that we're trying to be carnal. We will answer questions and when we are done, we will switch the meeting and then the Lord will bring grace Ola Marakabia Lebro Shabara da Barako Brezina Maya I have entered I have entered I have entered your secret place. I have entered. I have entered. I have entered your secret place. Oh, Remodo Breja Cabello Zabilan. Come on now, exercise your spirit. Don't be shy. Talk to God. Some of you, since Monday, God has been pointing certain things out to you. Oga, work on your anger. Work on your pride. Can you talk to God just for a few minutes? I there's a strong body to pray, but uh, it's not a prayer meeting. It's just but can I just talk to God just for a few minutes once and again? Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you celebrate God? Okay, like what uh, our daddy have said. Please, I, I want you to come from the spirit now because most of the things that are plaguing you know, they are not in the spirit. So just come back so that you'll be free to ask any question that has become a burden to your heart. Praise the Lord. And by the grace of God, uh, God has assured us that answer will be provided by the help of the spirit through his anointed servants. Praise the Lord. 
I want us to look at something from the scripture before I proceed. There are two kind, or there are two persons that the Holy Ghost, God is there, asks us to follow. The first person, follow Jesus, the author and the finish of our faith. And thereafter, I say, follow me who through faith. So when you follow Jesus, in as much as the men are following Jesus, you are also qualified. From 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, Apostle Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. So here we are today, we have men that have track records. Praise the Lord. Men that have followed Jesus by the help of God. That God has prepared for them to provide answers to our difficulties. Hallelujah. So once again, can you help me as we celebrate our fathers? Can you do that more better? Hallelujah. So permit me, I, I don't know much to introduce, but please, I please, I forgive me as I do this. Hallelujah. So the first person that will be bringing to the stage is our own very pastor, Pastor Ozzy and his wife. Please, can we make welcome again? <laughs> Hallelujah. Have been the one, so since you are not the one, crap, crap. Can you crap? Don't be dull, lost now, crap. Ah. If I should bring you here now, you will be able to move up from where you are sitting to come out. So just clap again. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's okay, I'm not a comedian. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, can you help me as you welcome? Okay. Let's welcome the pastor of Heritage Assembly, Pastor CJ and Pastor Ifeo Kobo. We are glad to have you here, sir. We are glad to have you here, ma. Thank you very much for gracing us today. Praise the Lord. So please, with a standing ovation, as you celebrate our father and our mother, as you bring them up. I, I don't need to mention his name, or I don't need to mention their names. You know them already. Hallelujah. OK, you can now sit down. You know that we are the one under the Holy Spirit. We are the one in charge now. Sit down. Sit down. So thank you, sir. Okay, praise the Lord. I, I trust that since Monday it's been refreshing. There are many clarifications, many doubts that have been changed, many notions that you had that have been changed by the power of the Holy Ghost through the teachings from Monday from our father, then Tuesday from our mother. So if you're having questions, even from what daddy said this evening, if you're having questions, we'll want to go with the in-house for a few minutes before we go online. So if you're having questions, please kindly come at. Like Daddy said, even if we know that you are the one, you can say somebody that you know. No problem. We'll accept as long as you ask those deep questions. Because if you do not ask, you will not have the answers. And trust me, these answers will be coming from a wealth of knowledge. From a wealth of knowledge. Our marriage... Uh, counseling pastor is here. So all those questions you have concerning that sister you've been looking at, like that is, uh, Brother Ovie said, the art word has been confusing you. No problem. It's time to ask those questions now. Please, if you know you have a question, just come out. Kindly come out. We'll stay this way. Wow. Praise the Lord. Wingosa, thank you very much for the teaching so far. Uh, my question is it's lingering from Monday till today. On Monday, I 
I came late actually, but I met when Daddy was saying that a real man is someone who is a protector, who is a provider, and also is a love, is a lover. Then yesterday, Mommy taught us that a, a woman that has true beauty is the one that fears God and honors God. My question now is that for people who grew up in homes who did not have parents who were real men or had who did not have fathers who were protectors, who were providers, and who were lovers, and mothers who were not really the Proverbs 31 women. And this, this has actually brought out, become a scar to them, that even as Christians, and they are not taking examples from Christ, this scars has had a way of infiltrating into their character and their behaviors. So how do we not speak healing, or rather bring healing to these scars and help these individuals change and become who God really wants them to be. I'm directing the question to Daddy. Hallelujah. Okay. Uh, very good question. Uh, the truth is, you don't see trauma in a person's face. When I say trauma, I say people who have had traumatic experiences growing up. Uh, they are usually very well dressed, beautiful makeup, uh, looking good. Uh, and so what you have asked is one of the serious issues that we are dealing with today among singles. Uh, people who have not healed properly, uh, but they find themselves in marriage and many things start manifesting that they don't have control of. You see, in the church, we have greatly failed in our, in our, as our, uh, in our responsibility as pastors. Because, you see, one of the things that every Christian ought to recognize from the day you get saved is that you begin a journey or a walk, permit me to say, with the Holy Spirit. And if you are faithful in that walk, one of the things that will definitely happen is that you will give the Holy Spirit room to begin to deal with issues in your life that no other person can. I don't know if you are getting this. The reality is that issues pertaining to upbringing and all that are, are, are issues that require a personal uh, what's the word I said? You have to deliberately give the Holy Spirit room to be able to access those things. It's not what a teaching in church can address. <laughs> These are things that come as a result of years of fellowship and interaction with the Holy Spirit. Over time, things begin to leave you. Over time, you realize that you are, you are like Scripture says, as we behold in a glass, you find that the transformation start taking place without even you realizing it. And one day you wake up and just see that you are not that person that you used to be, right? And the, the core thing about discipleship is a disciple looks to Jesus as an example and is committed to doing everything to conform to that standard. So from the day you become a disciple, just the way unbelievers, despite their father, their mother, some wake up one day and say, uh, what's that terrible guy's name again? N Naira Mali. And they became Malians. Ah, we are Malians. I started doing crazy things. You see, it's the same thing in the kingdom. For us, we look to the Lord as a mentor. And we tell ourselves that that is the one that we want to conform to. So he becomes the standard. He becomes the one that, that, uh, that, that we, are, we are longing to be like. Praise God. I hope I've been able to answer your question. Let me stop so I don't. I, are, you, are you glad? Praise God. Bingo, Daddy. Bingo, Mom. Bingo, my pastor. Praise God. Good evening, everybody. Um, my question is from the book of Genesis 24. Um, I won't be able to read, but it's, it's about the story where Abraham sent 
servant Isaac to look for a wife, his servant rather, to look for a wife for his son Isaac. And um, on that journey, the servant actually got a good wife for Isaac. My question is, Isaac was not even in the know of how that wife was gotten. The wife was just brought to him. And that was a successful marriage. Um, he didn't hear the voice of God. Where my question is, is not about, we are not um, taking away the fact that we need to involve God because in that story, the servant asked God to direct him. Yes. So my question now is, is it safe to be in church? I find a sister, and I observe this sister. And over a time, I see that she's a Christian. And then I know how God speaks to me that I've never heard once the audible voice of God. And it has always been by knowing and an impression. And I'm having an impression about a sister in this time now. Can I be safe? Or I need to secure a word from God. Like a word, a concrete word as there. So that, because I've heard many times that you need to you need to have a word to hold on to when there is crisis and say that this, Lord, is what you said. So that, that's my question. Am I, am I the one to ask? <laughs> uh, okay, good question. First, let me explain Abraham's and Isaac, fine. By divine orchestration. I, I don't know if you are getting this. Uh, Abraham was also a prophet. Uh, he recognized the direction that his lineage was supposed to go. Right? When he sent his servant, I believe that by prophetic insight, he had already seen an end. You get. Uh, that, is a, that is not the common way we will see God lead men in our day to day. Uh -huh. But in that time, it was acceptable. Uh, because of the, the person involved and the grace that was upon him. Uh, so we can, we can easily understand the direction that that had to go. And scripture tells us clearly, immediately Joseph, sorry, uh, Isaac saw Rebekah. Uh, he knew this one is the one that the Lord has sent to me at a time as this to bring comfort to me. You understand? So there was also confirmation. He could have seen and said, Now nah, lie, not be you. <laughs> you understand? Uh, so th that's for that. The, the question of hearing God is one of the reasons why, for a long time, I've stopped attending single seminars. Because I realized that we have a bunch of young men and women who don't want to hear God, who have settled in their minds that if God is to choose for me, he will choose the one I don't like. So it's better I choose myself. Right? And the truth is, <laughs> the, the well-dressed man and woman you see coming to church, holding hands and looking good, right? And you are looking and saying, man, see marriage, I wish I could be like this. The reality is, if you really know what they are going through, hmm, you will know that majority of marriages today in the church are not working for this one reason right what you heard today i want to beg you don't forget because it made such a deep impression in my heart right that many people are marrying fools for this same reason the truth is just like going back to the first answer i gave if you are maintaining a walk with the holy spirit it's easy for you to know how did i know this woman be my wife. Same thing. A steady walk with God. I got into campus and immediately I got to school. God told me from under level, don't bother. Your wife is not in this school. Serve me. 
Are you following this? It takes all the distraction away from your mind. And I gave my heart, my life to God and, and saved him. And I say my life, you understand? As in, I spent my days on campus serving the Lord. Immediately I stepped into NYC. The voice of the Lord was clear to come. There are people you are going to meet in this place that are going to be instrumental to where I'm taking you to. So ensure you don't leave. I served in Medigree, Bono State, right? Well, the Boko Haram, all the crazy thing, though there was no Boko Haram then anyway. But the conditions in that place is enough for you to immediately redeploy. But God had an agenda. So there's a step by step. The day we, we got to meet, I just finished teaching Bible study. I was Bible study second. And she came to meet me and said, wow, I was blessed. I would like to have the outlines. Hmm? And I was impressed. A woman that is eager to know God more. Praise God. But to be honest with you, not one thought crossed my mind that this will be my wife. But there was a steady progression. And when the time was right, it came clear. This is the woman I've set apart for you. You see, the truth is, hearing God is not as hard as we often try to make it seem. It's, it's easy. And if you know God well enough, you, you need to bring yourself to that point where you can trust his judgment and be able to tell that it's the one that God convicts me concerning that is the best for me. Praise God. Hmm? Let me stop. Good evening, everybody. You know, um, when it comes to knowing as in the issue of the will of God, concerning marriage. I don't know why people are, the young people are usually scared, you know? If God is your father, do you understand? Just imagine your dad is going out and he says, I'm going out. As a child, you want to know that where are you going to? Do you understand? Why? Not necessarily because you're interested in where he's going to. See, when mommy comes back, I'll be able to tell her that this is where daddy went to. And I'm just bringing it down to the basics. God loves you. He's your father. And if you're a person of his presence, there's nothing he's not going to tell you. You remember when God was going to Sodom and Gomorrah, to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? And he said, how can I... David, I'm sorry, Abraham never asked God, where are you going to... As in, what do you want to go and do? God himself said, ah, he was going already and then he paused. And said, how can I hide this thing for my servant, Abraham? So he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above what he could ever ask think or imagine. Do you understand? So even your imagination, God answers. What you are thinking, God hears you and gives it to you. I've had situations where I just think of something and then I see it coming my way. I'm like, I've not even asked. Why? Because before I even ask, he knows the things I'm in need of. He knows that marriage is a path, you know, in the advancement of his kingdom and that's why he has called me. So I, I'm just rest assured that marriage is something he will tell me about. Where to work, what school to to go to, what course to, to read. They are all on the same level. I think part of the issue is we have, we have um, I think, placed marriage as one very big, important, you know, it's important, yes, but it's on a hierarchy of its own. You can hear God, what school to go to, what work to do, do you understand? Maybe some other things. Should I go out? Should I not go out? So why do you think that when it comes to marriage, when he knows that, <laughs> This one is very important. He won't tell you. So the will of God is very simple. Like I said, be a person of God's presence. David, sorry, Abraham was in God's presence. Do you understand? You know? And God told him, this is what I wanted to do. It was in his presence he began to intercede for Sodom and Gomorrah. You get? So ask. For me, I didn't even ask. I didn't even know that, you know, I needed to know, that, know the person I would get married to. I didn't even know that. I just dedicated my life to Christ for three months down the line. I was praying in my room. My roommate was there. And I just, it was just like a trance. I saw him. I saw what he was going to be doing. I saw everything. He told me this person that you're going to get married to. I just said, like, this God matter. Bless, I don't enter him too much. Do you understand? It's like I'm giving myself too much. That God is now speaking to me and telling me who to get married to. I never knew that. You know, that was part of it. But it came to me because I was in youth service, like you said. It's just campus fellowship that I knew. I was, I, was, I was from the Catholic background. So I never knew that. In Catholic background, you like the guy. You, put, you date, when you date, five years, then you 
people now, now decide that, okay, we now want to get married, we have dated long enough. That's the background I was coming from. But without asking God, God told me who to get married to. So, but you are in Christ and you have, you know, all the knowledge that you have. I don't think the will of God should be an issue for us at all. God wants to speak to us. He wants to tell us what to do, how to go about it. Because it's going to bring him pleasure. Revelation 4.11, like I always say, is, honor, glory, power belongs to our God. Be marriage is part of the things that God created to bring him pleasure. So everything that you are about, whether a daughter, whether a son, whether a student, everything is to bring him pleasure. God is not interested in putting you, making you just, you know, it's not kalo kalo, like bets. You just go, uh, like Pastor Kess said this evening, 14 people will come, you now start doing tum bum tum bum. I hope you guys understand my, <laughs> do you understand? I'm speaking Lagos Pigeon, so I don't know if you guys understand, <laughs> you know? But you get what I mean, then you now select who the person is. No, I don't think God wants that for you. He's precise. He's sure what he wants to put in your hand. Except like Pastor Kess said, you are not sincere. Yeah. If you are not a sincere person, just forget it. You are not ready. Praise God. Okay. So, I think what I need to add is you're, you said at the end that do I need to get a specific word? Can I be led by an impression? Can I be led by um, a feeling if I know how God speaks to me? Right? Say probably God speaks to me with dreams, speaks to me with an impression or whatever. Can I on that get married if I don't get a specific word from the Lord? Well, for me, when it comes to matters of marriage, I believe that God, like what Pastor Efe and Pastor CJ have said, God does not leave it to chance that you will not be sure that this is what he's saying. And most of the time, when God wants to give you a sure sign, he gives you a sure word. Yes. So, even if you have an impression in your spirit that I'm, I'm led that this is the person, I will counsel, get a sure word from the Lord. That you can say, this was what the Lord said to me concerning this. Now, look at Pastor Efe and Pastor CJ. Look at me. If you hear Ogogo, it's the same thing. And Pastor OG is the same thing. If you hear Apostle, it's the same thing. God said, I was praying, and then God told me, I will give you a wife. Yes. It cannot be a mistake. It's not to bomb to bomb, like we say, worry, kalo, kalo. <laughs> huh? So get a sure word, so you can anchor it on the word. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Uh, mommy, we have a question for you here. You see, as a Christian sister, how do you help a fellow Christian sister who is about getting married to a Muslim man? A Muslim man. Yes. How do you, he wants to know how do you help such persons? A Christian sister who is about to get married to a Muslim, a Muslim man. Yes. Ma how do you help such a person? Yes, uh, there's not much you can do but uh, cancel and pray for her. Because when it comes to the matters of marriage, especially when the sister is, um, <laughs> when the sister is in love, one, and then when age is no longer on her side, when the pressure is very, very much on her, there's not much you can do in situations like that. The best you can do is to cancel her as much as you can from the word of God. Then you begin to make intercession for her to ensure that she doesn't fall into the you know, she doesn't fall into that kind of marriage. Thank you. So let's go back to... Okay. Good evening, everybody. For some time now, I think the Lord has been answering specific questions concerning the marriage that are in my heart. And when you were speaking, answers were, was, was coming, but it was not clear. I wanted to be totally sure. You said... Um, Jesus said, for every cause, a man should not divorce his wife for, or less for the case of immorality. 
for some time now, I've seen that people go into marriage and maybe they were blindfolded, I don't know. But the people involved, they were not totally uh, like truthful. They were not honest. We began to hear some things about maybe the lady after the marriage and all that. Recently, a marriage was divorced. No, it was annulled because uh, they found out that the man was, he was impotent and he, he didn't say it before uh, the marriage took place. It was annulled by the church. And you said, and Jesus said, for every reason, it will not be annulled unless this, this cause. So I want to ask, is it biblical, biblical uh, correct to annul that marriage since it was not for the case of immorality? Thank you, sir. It, the thing is that for there to be divorce, there has to first of all be a marriage. That thing that happened was not a marriage. So, because it was not a marriage, the church has the authority to annul it. It is what God has put together that a man cannot put asunder. And what God puts together in this case, for instance, must be built on truth. Because there is falsehood, it already nullifies the marriage. That marriage is a lie. The man and his wife, they were naked and not ashamed. So this is why, if you look at RCN worry, premarital counseling form is detailed. Are you owing money? Not when you have married the sister. There's no money to pay school fees. Say, I'm owing debt. Oh, guy, you didn't tell me you were owing debt. It might even be a debt that her and her children will pay till they die. You understand? So those details are in it. Do you have a disease? And the way RCN worry counseling form is, you feel it separately. You are not allowed to have meeting as fiancé and fiancé. Uh, or I don't know the name to you, brother and sister. And agree on what to feel. Each person feels it individually. Do you have a sickness that you cannot disclose to your spouse? So if you put it in the form, Pastor Oji, for instance, will identify, will identify. We will call you privately, discuss with you, and even help you inform the sister if you cannot tell her yourself. All those details must be there because once there is falsehood, it's no longer a marriage. So everything must be open. I'm important to, I've, I've, I've done this, I've done that, I have this sickness, I have that disease. Let the person of their own accord be able to say, I want to go ahead despite this information. If that is not done, the marriage, it was never a marriage and it can be annulled. You understand it? Hallelujah. Let's just take this one from online. She says, I, uh, as a Christian, do we need white wedding to be considered legally wedded? Is a traditional wedding okay? Does a man of God need to be present? Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, um, I don't believe a white wedding is compulsory. Um, where the problem is, is that some people want to do, well, I won't call it a white wedding. I'll call it a church wedding. Uh, some people want to do traditional wedding, then also want to do the church wedding. But they also want to perhaps sleep with their wives or do something funny in between those two events. My own thinking is that if you have no plans to do your church wedding, your traditional wedding is fine. It's recognized by the law of the country. Praise the Lord. But if you have plans to come and stand before the brethren and say, we want to be joined, then you should understand that your traditional wedding will not be just a first step. And your church wedding will be the second and final step of that process. So for those who are here, you can do your traditional wedding and we can recognize your, your, your marriage. You are wedded lawfully. But if you have the intention to come and stand before God's people and say we are going to be joined, then you should know that your traditional wedding is just the first phase. 
So if that's the only one you want to do, it's fine. You are lawfully wedded. And if you want to do the church wedding in addition, it's fine also. Praise the Lord. Um, the church wedding can also stand, you know, um, sorry. In the church wedding, remember that we also take a, a comment from a family member. Has this person done everything that is required for that wedding? And if the person says yes, then we go ahead to join. But if the person says no, I assure you we will not join. Praise the Lord. I'm sure many of us have not been, or none of us have been in that kind of a wedding before where they called for that information and somebody says he has not paid all the money. <laughs> I'm sure that wedding will be cancelled on the spot. Praise the Lord. So traditional wedding is fine. You can get a man of God to come there and bless it. Or even after the wedding, meet a man of God and say, pray for us, we have just been wedded. Traditionally, it's fine. There's no problem there. and verse 14. Let's begin at verse 13. And this is the second thing you do. You cover the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping and crying, so he does not regard the offering anymore, nor receive it with goodwill from your hands. Yet you say, for what reason? Because the Lord has been witness between you and the wife of your youth, with whom you have dealt treacherously, Yet she is your companion and your covenant, your wife by what? Covenant. So the reason in Christian circles we, we like a man of God to be present is the wedding is taking place under God. God is also bearing witness to the joining. So that's why a man of God is present. Because that thing is, you are not just getting married and giving... Um, paying bride price and doing all that you are entering into a covenant right so for a christian like pastor oji said at the traditional marriage you can get a man of god to bless you if you don't want the ceremony of the man of god there at least let god bear witness to that joining that's why we do the white wedding but if you don't want to go through the rigors of the white wedding bring a pastor, I've done that before. At the traditional wedding, you join them, you pray for them. It's just a blessing. And God bears witness. You take your vows under God so that we know that it is God that is in charge of that union. That's just why we do that. Praise God. Man, okay, you want to add something? I just wanted to add. I think it is strange for a genuine believer to do traditional marriage and not consider it important for a minister or your pastor to come and bless your marriage. It's, it's, it's a thinking that we should not even consider amongst Christians under a ministry. It, you should consider it important to submit your marriage, therefore, to your pastor for that blessing. Let me just give a testimony. There's somebody like that who got married in church maybe like three, four years ago. I can't remember now. You know, and they just did the marriage, went to the traditional, went to court, and, and they, were they were like that for a while, with that same mindset. But I knew that this is not right. So I called them after like a year or thereabout, and I just said, I, I sense that I need to bless this marriage. And both of them knelt down, and I prayed for them. A few weeks later, they came back. They said, Pastor, you won't understand. Immediately after you prayed for us, all the doors that have been shut to us, all of a sudden, everything opened. I don't know if you are getting this. Everything that had not been working in this home, all of a sudden, there was just a turnaround. And I say, yeah, I don't find that strange. Because the reality is that when you shut God out of your marriage, you, you, it, there's no miracle that can happen. As Christians, the, the first thing that should cross your mind you know, after your traditional is, I, I, I need God's hand now to come upon this marriage. So, yes, I, everything, as you said, is correct. You are married according to the traditional laws, but you are a Christian. And so, it should be in your hearts to honor God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Let's take one more question here. This... Wow. Okay, like... Praise the Lord. Um, 
My question is on the subject of hearing God. Uh, let me say the Holy Ghost because I believe that a lot of Christians, they have this desperation to hear the Holy Ghost. And in that area, you know, like Jesus said, the, the power of death and fear that is subjected to us for a lifetime, it has been destroyed. And most of the things that we did, why we were not born again, you know, we are doing the biddings of Satan, and these spirits, they are still there roaming around. Now, they, they, they've seen that you are raising an alarm to enter into a next phase by hearing the Holy Ghost, and they believe that if you arrive there, um, you, you will be on, the, on a better ground. So, when you are doing this thing, you are, you are, you are desperately in it to hear the Holy Ghost, and then, I believe that it is dangerous to believe the wrong voice. I about the wrong voice spoke and you could not disarm it and you actually believe it and you are doing those things. You are following the step of that voice all this while. Meanwhile, it is not the Holy Ghost. So my area is about my answer, my question is about that area. How do you really how do you disarm the voice? What are the simple tips to follow to to really know that yes, it is the Holy Ghost that is speaking. Because I have only had communication through my thoughts. Like the if it's question. Okay, good. So next lady. All right. Very so pastor, let's take the question. So just note, is your question? You will answer. Okay. Yes. Good evening, sirs. Good evening, ma'am. Um, this question is directed to my friend. I have a friend. She was once in an abusive relationship, and she finally left the guy. What kind of abuse? Emotional, physical. Beats, physical abuse. Yes, okay. sir. Then she left that guy, and she entered into another relationship. Now, the one she's in currently, the guy is not really married, but he has a girl that's giving birth for him, and she has refused to leave, to leave this relationship. I don't know how to help her. Mommy CJ, that's your question. Yes, Brother Silas. Please, just be short. Please. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This question is for my two cousins. A believer, a believer who married a Christian and has put on the form of holiness, or a believer who married an unbeliever in the form of godliness. Now, they are married together, giving birth to three children in the marriage, or mm -hmm. four. Mm -hmm. Now, the believer, now finally realized that this marriage, I made a mistake, and I give it to three children. Should the believer divorce the marriage, or give a divorce later, or endure the pain, the sorrow of the marriage that he's passing through, or what should he do? Pastor Oji, that's your question. <laughs> Sister Martha. My question is towards the female gender. Mm -hmm. is that word? I've noticed recently, I've seen sisters come around, heard them say, I'm getting married on that day, I'm going to wear probably hips and one or two. And then some of them, before their big day, you obviously see them turning their, their skin, and it's obvious. And these people are tongue-speaking people. And now with the current rise in skincare, I've seen tongue-speaking believers Obviously, tune their skin with excuse of my mom is fair, I'm like my mom, or in my house we are yellow, you know, things like that. And some go as far as doing um, soft surgery, like adjust the nose, do fillers on the face to give them more glow. My own is, as a believer now, because this thing is looking as if it's normal, how do we create the balance? Because I've really seen these things happen to people that are only ghost filled, tongue speaking, and they live life that you admire. Pastor, Mrs. Tracy, Siri, that's your question. Good evening, Ma. Good evening, sir. Yeah. My question is for Daddy and Mommy. Mm. My question is... Go ahead. <laughs> My question is, Daddy said no divorce is permitted except fornication. Same time, Daddy said leave an abusive marriage. So my question is, me telling my mom to leave, is it a bad thing or am I committing sin? Saying the okay. things she tolerates, is it because she did not hear God, that's why the marriage is like that? Growing up, because me and my sisters, we hate men and both boys, due to what we have been seeing. Mommy was talking about Proverbs 31 women, and I was like, that people that tolerate, I, I like when you were talking about it then, I even hate women that tolerate, let me not lie. I hate them. So should she be and die, or she should leave? Or if she leave and marry again, is it a sin? Okay. I will answer that one. <laughs> Gary, you have not escaped. Oh. 
Your question is coming. It's coming with fire. <laughs> okay, so Pastor F.A., so we go quick, quick. All right, crash course on how to hear God. Fantastic. All Bring right. out your notepad. Crash course, <laughs> hearing God 101. Quick. In, in simple terms, study the Bible. Everything that you need to hear from God has already been documented. Mm -hmm. The more familiar you are with scriptures, the easier it is for you to discern the voice of God. The con the, what I'm studying from here is that because of the, the caution he's talking about in terms of other voices, until you become familiar with God's voice, you cannot perfectly uh, identify other voices. So the first demand that God places upon us is to become familiar with his voice, which is what is documented in the Bible. So you've never gone through the Bible, begin that study. The more you give yourself to the study of God's word, the more the voice of God starts becoming clear to you. And over time, you will start understanding things better, you know, as God deals with you. That's one. Secondly, God speaks to us by a, an inner witness. Uh, all of us are familiar with this. Even unbelievers have that witness sometimes. Uh, it's the conscience, but at the same time, it's the Lord finding a way to bear witness to what he wants us to do per time. But as you become a Christian, it becomes more real to you. And in the sense that now you have the Holy Spirit in you. So the Holy Spirit bears witness with your spirit. And so from time to time, there will be this, not, this, this tugging in your spirit. For me, for example, how I was able to tell that's not... If I, at, for a long time, I could not hear, this is your wife. But as I look to the Lord, the Lord will, there will be this talk in my spirit. Don't go there. I don't know if you are getting this. No voice per se, but there's just this knowing that she's not the one. Right? There's just this knowing that don't go there. Don't relate with this person anymore. So that inner witness becomes real to you as you fellowship with God and you grow you know, uh, with him. Let me just say this. Do not try to want to hear an audible voice. Uh, because many times God will not speak that way. Yeah, but one thing is sure. Through scriptures, he will speak to you. Through an inner witness, he will speak to you. The other ways are subject to this too. Any dream you have that does not align with scriptures is not a dream. It's the devil trying to mislead you. Uh, so in as much as some people walk with dreams, I say, yeah, it's good. But your dream should also be checked with what scripture says. Uh, you can't have a dream that, that um, sorry, what's your name? Larry. 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 Sister Larry is supposed to be your wife. And so you start praying that this man should die. Right? You are, you are functioning under the spirit of witchcraft. As funny as it sounds, there are people who are, who are, who are doing that right now. Because they have so believed their dreams. God has been speaking to me through dreams from when I was young. For me to have this dream, it must be God. No, it's not God. And the reason why this person is in that state is that foundation in scriptures and that walk with, your spirit, with the spirit that where the inner witness becomes real to you is not there. Hmm? So there are many other things for the sake of time. Let's leave it. All right. For this lady that uh, was in an abusive relationship, she left that one and then she's another one, Right? And the guy has children with another lady, right? I think the first question I want to ask is, I need more details. Is she saved? You know, is she saved? Because the things that we're speaking about now is not for the unbelievers. Do you understand? What we're speaking about now is for the Christians, the real true Christians. Yeah. Not the, one, the ones who have decided that Jesus Christ will be Lord. You know, they are carnal Christians. Those ones have not made the decision that Jesus, you will be Lord of my life. You'll be in control and in charge of my life. Those ones are still doing, playing games. So is she saved? If she's saved, I think then we need to <laughs> do an, a, a, a thorough work. Okay. Okay, I, yes. I, and if she's saved, then she really doesn't know her identity in Christ. One, she's settling for not even zero. She's settling for a minus. Because you've been in a precious relationship. I, I, didn't, I think there's something that Pastor even mentioned here. As Christians, we, what we deal with is one, friendship, courtship, marriage. 
Do you understand? So the dating aspect is what that lady is actually practicing. She dated the first person. It was abusive. It didn't work. So she's dating another person. So she has no head God. She, 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 she doesn't have any, anything to follow. So she's confused right now. The best thing for her, if she's saved, come out of that relationship and then gr be grounded in God's word and in the Lord. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He says, all other things shall be added unto you. Like to add what, to what Pastor said. You know, part of the issue that we have, this hearing God thing is that you are seeking who to marry. That's not what God is asking you to do. Seek me. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He says all other things. Marriage is part of the other things. It's because we have left God and we're not seeking marriage. Do you understand? Specifically, so you are hearing many voices and the devil will give you many voices. You understand? He will show you many things because he too he speaks, right? He slanders. He comes to your head to speak. So just seek God. Whenever you are in the state of being confused, is it the, person, is it the sister or is it not the sister? Say, God, I'm dropping it out at your altar. I'm dropping it. No more. In fact, I forget about it. No woman for now. In fact, next six months, Lord, is me and you. You, the first, in fact, you'll be, you'll be shocked. The very next morning, you will just hear his sister Rose. Do you understand? Because that weight, your mind is, is bombarded with that thing. You can't hear God. When you take it down, then you have that clarity to be able to now hear what God has for you. Okay, if I remember my question correctly, is it right to get involved in skin toning and many other padding and padding and padding here and there for sisters? Uh, it is not right. What is wrong is wrong and what is right is right. I can never tell you that that is right. Because somebody whose mother is dark, whose father is dark, and all of a sudden you just feel people that are light skinned are finer or they are better than people that are dark skinned and you decide to start rubbing one cream when they ask you you say it's just just to um, um, help my skin glow i don't know what they call it uh -huh. it's just to tone my skin whatever it is see the problem is not that you want to tone your skin the problem is with your self-esteem yeah. you have a very low self-esteem any yeah. sister who is doing that has not dealt with self-esteem issue you are trying to hide it you are trying to cover it yeah. but that is not going to help even if you tone your skin today and you become fair, and you see somebody that you consider better in your eyes, yeah. you will still look for how to step up again. Yeah, so you exactly. keep trying and trying and trying until you enter into hell. Yeah. Yes. That is just it. Yeah, yeah. I give you a practical example. There are some people that are naturally big. Like some sisters are naturally big. And some are naturally slim. There's nothing, no, 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 no amount of food that they eat that they can add. Do you understand? And then you look at a sister who is, who has body and everything, and you're feeling like God. You, are, you have drank Cipron, you have taken everything. As a matter of fact, you are even wearing hips. Wear big brothers with foam and everything. What are you trying to pack? Can you at least be grateful for the way God has designed you? It is not in your family, and it is not in your family. Are you following me? If you are big, enjoy your size. Yes, sir. You are big and you are beautiful. Bold, big and beautiful. Lord. Yes. If you are slim, you are slim and you are beautiful. Yes, sir. Enjoy the way you are designed. You have no apology whatsoever to anybody the way you are created. You did not create yourself, my sister and my brother. You yes. are short. You are tall. Can you, can you enjoy the way? Because people will not be able to place value on you if you do not place value on yourself. Place some value on yourself. I used to have that issue when I was much younger. I would wear double skirts. My husband used to tell me that, I, I, you don't know. I was very tiny. Those of you that come to my house, if you see my picture, you, you cry for me. I was very tiny. I used to have issues like, why am I so thin? I'll look at my hands, look at my leg. All the legs are looking like broomstick. And it affected me for a long time. When I see sisters who are big and there's this, I want to shrink. That's not the way it's, it's supposed to be. We were taught yesterday that it is as you behold that you become. Yeah. Beauty is not in what you look like. Only enjoy the way God designed you. You are big, you are small, you are short, you are, you are slim. Some people are even having issues. Maybe they gave birth to you and you have maybe your teeth climb on top of each other. I don't know what it is. 
and then you don't even smile at all at all. Why won't you smile? Did you create yourself? Why won't you smile? Some people are born with brown teeth. Your dentition is brown. And because of that, you, don't, you have gone to scrub and done everything. And doctors have told you, dentists have told you, there's nothing you can do about this thing. Live with it. But it's a lie. When they are checking, they are always using handkerchief to cover your, your mouth. What are you covering? <laughs> Look at my own teeth here. When I was in secondary school, there's this, are you seeing? There's this tiny one that is here. And they used to laugh at me like, oh, this your teeth looks like a witchcraft that used to suck blood. Now you know. And it affected me. Vampire. Uh -huh, that's the word. So I don't used to smile. I used to keep my face bald like this. People don't know the, the, the reason I don't smile. But now I will smile. I will open it every time. Because listen to me. Because even with this sugar cane leg and with this teeth that you're looking at, this two that looks like vampire, and this my small, small hands, God gave me the best. Do you understand? Hallelujah. So be glad. Be grateful. I don't have boss. I don't have hips. So what? That's not what makes me. I don't have very nice clothes to wear. The clothes do not make me. The hair do not make me. The grace and the glory of God is what make me. Thank you. Say we can close now. Praise the Lord. Now move to the next question. What should a believing wife do if she's married to an unbeliever? Perhaps she married an unbeliever before she became born again. Or maybe even she, she was born again and she married an unbeliever. What does she do? The answer is in the scripture. First Corinthians chapter 7. We we'll read from verse um, 12. First Corinthians 7 verse 12. I'll read quickly from the NLT. It said, Now I will speak to the rest of you, though I do not have a direct command from the Lord. If a believer, if a fellow believer has a wife who is not a believer and she is willing to continue living with him, he must not leave her. And if a believing woman has a husband who is not a believer and he is willing to continue living with her, she must not leave him. For the believing wife brings holiness to her marriage and the believing husband brings holiness to his marriage. Otherwise, your children will not be holy. But now they are holy. But if the wife or husband who isn't a believer insists on living, let them go. In such cases, the believing husband or wife is no longer bound to the other. For God has called you to live in peace. So if in that marriage a husband, citing the case you mentioned in your question, is willing to still be in the marriage. She is not permitted to divorce. Yes. But the day that the husband says, I'm tired, pack your, load and, pack your load and go. She is under no obligation to remain. So when she is trapped in this situation, what does she do since she is suffering all kinds of things? She becomes an evangelist to the husband. Praise the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> she becomes an evangelist. And that is in First Peter 1 3, Peter, yeah, 3 yeah. 1-2. And it says, likewise... Wives, be subject to your own husband so that even if some do not obey the word, they may be won without a word by the conduct of their wives when they see your respectful and pure conduct. Now, is it going to be easy? No. And before we go to this point, you read First um, Peter chapter um, 2. Towards the end, he was talking about how Jesus was revived, I was insulted, yet he uttered not a word, how he suffered many things. And it was encouraging that if you suffer for doing the right thing, it yeah. will be to your own credit. Yeah. But if you suffer for ev an evil thing, there's no credit to that. So it, it was a, 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 a counsel to a believing wife or a believing husband in a marriage to an unbelieving spouse. And it will be a difficult situation, definitely. But as you are there, you are to behave like Christ. When he was trying to win the world to himself, while we are yet sinners, he left heaven and came down to our level. Praise the Lord. He took, up our, our, he took on our sin. The Bible said that he was slapped. They plucked his beard. He did not utter a word. Praise the Lord. Why was he doing all that? 
because he wants to win that person. So that is the job of the believing wife who is trapped in a marriage with an unbeliever that is not ready to let her go. I believe that answers your question. Can she, she can remarry according to that scripture. She's not bound. Uh, if, 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 a belief, if, if the believing wife, if the husband sends her away, yes. the unbeliever sends her away, and we have to go by what Paul says, he said, she is not bound. She's not bound in the marriage. She's, the marriage is a covenant. If she's not bound to the covenant, it means... She's not bound to the marriage, but can she remarry? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pastor. Can she remarry? Well, in my own of interpretation, I'm open to correction. In my own interpretation, since the man is an unbeliever mm -hmm. and is now no longer willing to have her, Yes. She should be able to remarry. But you can correct me, sir. As long as the man is still alive, she can't remarry. Because decisions have consequences. It's the cross that she will be called to, called to bear. Yeah? She can't remarry as long as the man is He's alive. alive. Okay. This is why Paul says that the Lord has called us to peace. If you, can, if you can do whatever you can to stay in peace, stay in peace. But if you can't stay in peace, you are no longer bound by that marriage. But you cannot go and build another covenant until that man is no longer on the scene. Yeah. So, that would be the correct interpretation. Yeah. Okay, my own question, Abby. Yes. Are you done, man of God? Yeah. All right. Um, so, to clarify... When I say um, if there is physical abuse that the woman can leave, I'm not talking about divorce. I'm talking about separation. And what I mean is in any relationship, marital relationship, if you are in a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship and they are beating you, they are beating you for free. It's like, it's like that story I described at the tent where we will catch goat and we'll put it in the corridor and be beating it from right to left. You are just wasting your life. And it's a shame that you do not have a, a good self-worth, a good identity in Christ, that you are in a relationship where one boy is just beating you for free and you are still cooking for him and washing his clothes. It's a, it's a sad, sad situation. We are talking in the context of marriage. If you are in a marriage and the man has become physical or the woman has become physical, because let's not be acting as if some women don't beat men. Right? If the woman has become physical or the man has become physical, it is always safety first. You cannot be fighting for a marriage when you are dead. Yeah. You cannot be fighting for a marriage when you have become incapacitated for one reason or the other. So it's safety first. So when we say leave, we are saying go to a safe place so that your life is not at risk. That's what I mean. Now, you said, can she leave the marriage? There are dynamics inside. Are both of them Christians? Is one a Christian, the other a non-believer? If one is a Christian, the other is a non-believer, then what Pastor Oji said comes into play. If she, both of them are Christians, there is only one ground for divorce in the Bible. And it is adultery. But can there be periods of separation until the affected parties come to their senses? Yes. Counseling can be going on. Praying can be going on. But don't stay in an abusive relationship. They are beating you, banging your head. Once they beat you, all your blood is on the floor. And then you are staying, saying you are staying for the children. That's not staying for the children. That is you being in love with your abuser. And one day you will go to the land of Simi no more. It's guaranteed. Because people who are physically abusive normally don't know when to stop. So the person will die one day. So it is, be safe. While you are safe, be praying for your marriage, be trusting God to restore your home, and just be there until 
sanity is restored. Too many people have died. We do not encourage it. We do not encourage it. Now, to address your concerns, growing up in that kind of, that's the kind of home I grew up in. Right? And you've heard me teach before. You've been here for a while, Abby. And there is hatred, me as a man, there is hatred that welled up in my heart for my father. I saw my father beat my mother black and blue. I saw it black and blue. So, um, I know how you are feeling. But that's why you are a Christian. Mm. God did not make a mistake allowing you to, to be born in that home. Yeah. It's part of the ways that you must now go to the Lord and say, I, I redeem my family. Yeah. Stand in the gap for your father. Stand yeah. in the gap. I know it's painful to see your mother reduced to punching bag or your father for anybody else. Because a video was circulating just now. A woman carried a grown man. Grown man and slammed him on the ground. Yes. So it's possible. It, there is no emotion to describe it. If you've not felt it, you don't know it. But first of all, ask God to heal your heart. So that hatred does not build. Because God will not say because he loves you and hatred has consumed your heart, then he will allow you into heaven. Corruption will not enter into the new Jerusalem. So allow the Lord to heal your heart. You can't pray for someone you don't love. Then begin to pray for your father. But first, your mother has to go to safety. You understand what I'm saying? Don't hate brothers. I assure you, you see the way they spoke about me tonight? <laughs> uh, if you allow Pastor CJ to speak, she will tell you. I know my brother. I know Pastor Oji. Yeah. I can tell you about Pastor Mine. I can tell you about the men here. Alex. Right? They are good brothers in the kingdom. Solid brothers that love Jesus. They will take good care of you. They won't beat you. Yeah. They will love you. They will treat you nice. You know, so allow God heal your heart. Oh, yeah. And say yeah. the same thing to your sister. I assure you that your marriage will be beautiful. Yeah. Hallelujah. Can you celebrate God? Okay, we, we have a question here to our pastor's wife. Yes. Ma, he said, how do, how do we handle brothers with toxic behavior and refuse correction? Hmm. Toxic behavior. Brothers that refuse correction. How do we handle them? Is that a question from a sister or a brother? It should be from a sister. Yes, from yesterday. From yesterday, from a sister. Yes. Okay. All right. Praise God. Um, first of all, I think as a sister, if you are married to a brother, you should know the kind of person he is and someone that can call him to correction, maybe whenever he misbehaves or he does something that you cannot correct him. I think you should, you should ask him, you should have someone over him that can call him to correction and I think if you've spoken to him about those things he normally do to you that are wrong and there's no improvement, I think you should take him to that person you know that can bring correction. That's my advice. Thank you so much. Ma. Okay. Um, there's a question. You say if a man ruins a lady's life before he knew Christ and after he found Christ, it happens to be that the Holy Ghost reveals to him that that lady is God's way for him. And this is the person that will help in uh, fulfilling his God-given purpose on earth. How does he convince the lady that she's the will of God for his life? Especially when she doesn't even want to forgive him at all. Just give the question to Pastor Efe. We answer. <laughs> Go to the next one. Let's, let's assign. Give it to Pastor Efe so he doesn't forget. Just give okay. the paper to him so he this doesn't is, forget. This is yes. for mommy. Yes. He said, Mom, he said, yesterday you talked about husband looking dirty. And he has a wife. What about a situation sorry, whereby the man is going out and the wife tells him that what he put on is dirty, but he refuses to take correction and is thinking that he wants to control him. What will such woman do? Okay, so babe, that's your question. Amanda. Okay. Um, this one said, is about, from yesterday, she said that he talked about 
Being, a, being real as a lady, I have a bald head and I find it difficult to expose it, so I always wear wigs. How do I cope with this? I have a bald head. I know it's daddy that taught yesterday, but give it to mommy CJ. Daddy. I, have a bad, I was speaking about being real, that sisters should be real, that brothers don't like drama. All right, that sisters should be real. So she's saying now that she has a bald head and she always wears wig. So does she come to church with her bald head? I think that's what she's asking. Daddy, I, I think we have a similar question here. But okay. This is to you. Say, sir, could you explain more? A man does not play drama, does not like drama. Does not like drama. Yeah. Could you explain more? Okay. I will try to explain more. Okay, I think this one is straight to daddy. The person says, Daddy Migosa, what advice should be given to a friend who had a broken, abusive marriage? Uh, uh, abusive marriage, advising people uh, who are friends. I'm coming, let me get this straight. Please, whoever wrote this, thing, please rewrite it. It's not, not clear. It's not comprehensive. I want us to exhaust the questions in your hands so we go to YouTube. There are at least 10 questions. Okay, we have a question here, Daddy. Yes. So how, how, how do you handle a man who is strongly with low self-esteem. Pastor Oji, you can do justice to that, right? Okay, this yes. one says, what if a woman marries as an unbeliever and becomes a Christian later? She wants to adorn herself or take her standard from the Bible, but the man wants her to look like, uh, to take after the standard of the word. How does she go about it? Okay, that we have a question here. Okay, who is How taking that question? <laughs> Give it to Pastor CJ. <laughs> Pastor CJ. Okay. Yes. Have you given Gary a question? Read one, read one, read one. Sir, this one should be for you, so I will leave it for you. Say, how me. <laughs> it was directed to you, sir. Okay. He said, how do you help a father that is drug addict and adulterous? Hmm. Bring all my questions to me. Yes, Amanda. Okay, this one say, please, is it safe for a sister to marry a brother who is a believer indeed, but he's lazy with reading scriptures and spiritual books, even though they are indicators that he is God's will from her life? Uh, is there any question remaining? Yes. This, okay, this one, she said, a friend of mine who had a broken, abusive marriage and after leaving the marriage, she's going about advising her friends who are above 40 that they should just get pregnant and have children and forget about marriage, that there's nothing special about it. So should she take this advice? Well, so if it... Anyone remaining? Babo, so we go to YouTube after now. So we begin like this. So Pastor Oji, Sister Gary, Pastor Efe, Pastor CJ, my wife, husband man. Oh yeah, Pastor Oji, go. Okay, the question I have here said that I'm scared of marriage. I like man, but once it comes to marriage, I automatically run away. What can I do to help myself? Please come out for laying on of hands. <laughs> you should not be liking man, please. <laughs> uh, so what she is... I know, I know. Yes, so I, I, I believe she means that she is not averse to to, to uh, you know, yes. to a, a male. Yeah, I know. Uh, but when it comes to marriage, when she they propose, scared. she runs away. Yes. So I believe yes. there's an issue there. Maybe it's the kind of um, family you were yeah. brought up in. Maybe the marriage was not peaceful. There's something you have seen that made you have a phobia. I think some uh, that thing was trending in the city sometime early the, in the year. What's it called? Gamophobia. Yes. Yes. So there is something that you know instigated that fear and we, we have to investigate to know how to deal with that matter so i think you should seek counseling urgently and there's a problem you need to seek counsel then the next question i have here is being a real man does it make you not to stand up for yourself when you are going through oppression so um i don't really get the question i want to believe you are trying to ask that yes does it mean that you should not defend yourself when you are going through oppression? Um, if I get this question properly, um, being a real man, um, I don't really get the question you are trying to ask. I want to believe that you are trying to ask if it's right to, exp to express your, your a pain, express pain as a man. 
right? You are going through a tough situation. If it's okay to show that, okay, this thing you are, is, is a painful experience. No, he's or to about just defending himself yeah. when he's being oppressed. Yeah. Okay. But we need to know the context in of which that oppression is happening. Yeah. Okay. Is he being oppressed by his wife? Is he being oppressed by his colleagues in the office? Yeah. That is how we'll be able to answer the question. That it's question. Difficult okay. now. Okay. Then the, the, the final question is, uh, how do I help my husband that is has a low self-esteem? Yes. What do I do? Yes. So as a as a woman, you have to know how to speak words of affirmation. Yeah. You have to speak words of encouragement to him. Even when you see the flaws, you don't speak those flaws. You speak what you what you want him to be. Praise the Lord. Yeah. You don't mock him with his fears. And I think one of the things that um, women need to understand, that was touching on that yesterday, is the power of words. And your words can build your man up. You can tear him down. And many times, women don't understand that and they become flippant. They just throw words about. And those words are heavy words. So as a wife, know that you now have to begin to beg the Holy Spirit to give you utterance on how to speak to that man to bring him to life until he, be, he begins to function how God wants him to function. So as a, as a woman, you need to read books also on how to communicate in a way that builds and not destroys. Praise the Lord. Yo, Gary, is your question now? question is, please, is it safe for a sister to marry a brother who is an unbeliever indeed? Who is a believer indeed, sorry. He's a believer indeed, but he's lazy with reading scriptures and spiritual books, even though there are indicators that is God's will for the sister. Um, I'll say um, a brother that is a believer indeed, uh, I'm not sure he should have issues reading yeah, scriptures. Right. Yes, right. reading his Bible because that's yeah. one thing that will make him a I believer, believer indeed. indeed. Exactly. That's one thing that grows up, up uh, grows us up as Christians. But maybe for books, it might be lazy in reading. Maybe because of uh, the hope bringing and all that, it might be lazy in reading. But you can encourage the person if it's the aspect of reading books, spiritual books, to encourage him. Like me, that's one thing I find difficult. Like when Daddy preached the last time that. It has a goal of reading um, books, like two books or four books in a month. I, mean, I picked a book this month and I said, I'm going to make sure I finish it. If it's a big book, the one I'm reading is a big book. I said, I make sure I'm going to finish this book this month. So it can start off from there. You can encourage him maybe by giving him a book. But still, I would say that's a uh, brother. In the aspect of the uh, scriptures, is a must. I don't know, but... It's something, it's part of how we grow. You have to read the, the word of God. That's my take on that. Okay, praise God. You wanted to add something? So just to add also, because the person you said is, you know is the will of God or you can see is the will of God. You also have to understand that people are growing. They are in different phases of growth. So um, there's a possibility that with time he can grow in that thing. So you don't just write him off. I believe um, some people who are married now and are doing great spiritual exploits did not start at this level when they started. So they, there was a, a, a story of growth. So you have to also exercise patience and keep encouraging in some of these things. And if he never agrees to read his Bible? <laughs> Report him to the higher authority. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor, if you, your questions. All right. Um, this question... It's, um, it's a little bit difficult for me to give a straight answer. Because uh, number one, you, I, I can't ascertain whether you actually hate God or whether it's actually the guilt of the atrocity you committed a long time ago that is making you feel that you owe this lady some, some, uh, some restitution or yes. some form of her. So I need to understand that because when it comes to the matters of hearing God, both parties should hear God. Uh, if you are the only one who has heard God, then there's a problem uh, because the other person involved also needs to be convinced that this is what the Lord is saying. If it's a situation where the, the lady has heard God, 
but she is still finding it difficult because of the pain of what happened between both of you. And then the best way to address it is uh, you need to get somebody else involved, probably a spiritual authority over both of you who will be able to uh, speak over the situation and guide her. And, but in this matter, I, I think one has to be clear that the Lord is actually speaking. And that's why I said it would be difficult to give a clear answer. The second question, um, mm -hmm. this lady has been hurt. And so now she's going about telling other people that they should not bother getting married. They should forget it, that there's nothing in it. Right? This is just the, the spirit of the age today. This is what has given rise to feminism. Right? This is what has given rise to many of... I've heard of many people on social media... Right? There's one famous one, Blessing CEO. I don't know if you have heard of Blessing CEO. All right. I heard about her recently. So there are people who have gone through terrible experiences, either in their marriage or in relationships, who have taken it upon themselves that they have become counselors now to speak to people. What they are basically doing is they're just expressing their pain. They are not, they are not really giving any meaningful counsel to people. The, the pain is so bad or it's so, it's so hurt, the hurt is so hard on them that they have made it, they've taken upon the, they've, or rather they've told themselves that they're going to ensure that nobody has a good relationship, right? So it's, it's actually witchcraft. It's, it's pain that has been mixed with devilish desires that have, that have turned these people into something that, uh, they, that they should not be. So my counsel is you need to tell this lady that she, she needs counseling. Uh, if she's your friend, you need to really sit her down and tell her she, she needs help. She, someone has to bring her to that point where she can begin to seek the Lord again for healing you know, and restoration. Else she's going to find herself destroying many. She'll just make herself a tool in the hand of the devil yeah, to bring destruction to many marriages. And just to remind us, the buses will be available. So just be calm. Our target is 7.30. We are closing. Are we together? Yes, is everybody at peace? Yes, so we'll, we'll, next 10, 15 minutes, we should be switching to prayer. So the buses will take you home. Okay, here says, Daddy said we should be real. And so she says she has a bowed head. Bowed head. And she finds it difficult to expose it. So I don't know why you want to expose it. I don't know to the extent that Daddy spoke about being real. But I'm sure what he was trying to say is be yourself. There are many people who are putting on wigs here who have hair. So it, 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 that doesn't mean that they're not being real, right? Hey, I know a sister who doesn't have hair, you know. And we keep speaking to the hair that the hair will grow. Do you understand? The same issue. But she still wears her wigs and she looks lovely in it. So that shouldn't... People don't even know that. You won't even see her and know that that is, that is what is going on. So I don't think you should be bothered about. Wear your wigs. Wear your wig cap or whatever it is you want to wear. It's fine. Praise God. So there's nothing to cope. Just keep wearing your wig. No, no, definitely. And the sister I talked about, she has a husband. And the husband knows that when we go to her house, she takes the thing off. All of us will be seeing it. You get so she's not even, she's not ashamed of even having to carry it around with us when we're in her house. But definitely when she's going out, she puts on her wig. So there's nothing there's nothing to it to it. Please keep putting on your wigs and look nice. Praise God. Except you want to go bow, the script, the whole thing. If she's a single sister, if she's a single sister, she keep wearing her wigs. But when it's time to get married, then show that the brother to is aware that. That, and if he says he wants to see the extent to which you are bowed, please take it off let him see it. and let him see it. Uh, somebody said, ah, that's true now. You yes. just have to be real. You have to be real. You just have to be real. Praise God. And the second one says, um, what if a woman is married, marries an unbeliever, and then becomes a Christian? And then the man still wants her. She now wants to dress you know, I don't herself properly, the standard of the Bible, but the husband wants her to, to dress like the world. I think that's basically what they're trying to say. Right? So, um, this sister now, I don't know when, what you mean by adorn yourself. 
take a standard from the Bible because people, many people have taken standards from the Bible that it's just a, a, a pattern in a church. Praise God. Just a pattern in a church. The basic thing is you are decent. You are decently dressed. You know, Scripture says in, um, in, in Matthew 5, 10, I think, it says, Blessed are they that suffer for righteousness sake. Theirs is the kingdom of God. You know, when we read the Bible, we read through the, the letters of Paul. These Greeks suffered the same thing because they are from, these are hidden nations, right? They were, they were temple prostitutes, male prostitutes, female prostitutes, who, who were, in fact, they, they practiced lewdness in public. And then they gave their life to Christ. Do you understand? And they began to dress properly. Definitely some of them had husbands who were not saved. And they suffered these very things. Do you understand? So, suffering for righteousness sake, if you go through, I think, First Peter, you go through, um, I think, Corinthians 2, you, 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 it's, it's, you're suffering for righteousness sake. God will give you the answer and the help that you need at that particular point in time. For example, maybe I got saved, I got saved when I got married and I got married to an unbeliever. And he wants me to wear a top that shows my bust. Do you understand? I'll make him understand that, see, I can't wear a shirt that shows my bust because of the person I am now. I think some of these questions can be to the extreme. He's not, even if he beats me to wear something that is not right, I will still not wear it. Do you understand? So I may just have to receive that beating for that time. If it continues and it's so much, it's too much, just like Pastor said, where there is now physical abuse in the marriage, there are many options. I may just have to, you know, separate from it. If it's now becoming detrimental to my life, so, but I think there's, there's a lot. In, in the, 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 where we are now, you know, we're not suffering that kind of persecution that the early Christians suffered. Some were, some were seriously, in fact, beaten. They were dealt with seriously. So we don't even have the picture. That's why it looks like, uh, what will you now do? In those days, they knew what to do. Stand. Just stand. Dress properly. Stand. It's, it's, it's as simple as that. It can be alcohol. You used to drink alcohol, your husband, or you used to go to a club with your husband. You are now saved. Your husband say you must follow me to, to the club. Do you understand? Is it that two things? Ask the Lord. Lord, what will you have me do at this point in time? It's not cast on stone. If the Lord says, follow him to the club, you will follow him to that club. But you will not be dressed like them there. You know, let me give an example. When I got saved, I had the issue of... Um, having to go to my parents' church. They had a way they wanted me to do, to worship God. And I told them, say, I'm not going to a club. I'm not chasing men. It's the Lord I'm pursuing. But they couldn't understand. So what have you been pursuing since? Do you understand? So they insisted that I must go to their church. Guess what? I went to that church. And when they stand, I stand. When they sit, I sit. Do you understand? Immediately after the, 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 the church service, I begin to go to my own church. That did not defile me. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I'm just being, making the picture a bit um, bigger, or broader. It's, just, it's not just about dressing, just in case there's another person who's having that issue. I still went to their church, and I, I kept, kept going to mine. When I got married, after a while, when they saw that this lady has carried God on her head, they left me. But I never quarreled with them. I was never rude. I honored my parents in that because I was still under their roof. So in this situation, it has to do with submission. There is a way you go about it. Seek the Holy Spirit to help you in that situation. One day the man will wake up and he will not trouble you anymore. But you will not fight with him. You will not quarrel with him. Keep and maintain that peace. Praise God. I think that's all. Okay, my question here is, um, a, a, man, a man doesn't dress properly, like I taught yesterday, I said, your husband is going about with smelling socks and um, wearing dirty shoes and maybe he has mouth odor and all those many things. And you, the wife, you are aware, you're not doing anything about it. I hold you responsible. Okay, so let me make it clear. Now, this woman is saying, I'm trying to help and... He's making it look like I'm trying to boss over him or I'm trying to rule over him. He's getting upset. Two things to this. It could be the way you said it. You know, when we just got married, my husband used to tell me, 
if you are going to make a point to me, say it nicely. There are better ways to go about these things. If you as a woman, you are trying to beat down the man's self-esteem in the name of correcting him or trying to help, he will never take it from you. For instance, the man wants to go out and his shirt is smelling sweat. And then you now say, this is your shirt. You just start talking like a foolish person. A virtuous woman is one that opens her mouth with wisdom. She doesn't talk anyhow. She doesn't use words anyhow. There are better ways to say it. You tell the man, you have been wearing this shirt for the last three days. Look at the way you smell like a pig. Haba. You think he's going to answer you. He will never take that from you. But if you go to the man and say, ah, this shirt, um, wait, did you wear this shirt yesterday? He's like, yes, I wore it. I think you should change it too. If he's not agreeing, let him go. There are better times. Maybe you can go and meet him later and start explaining why you said what you said. Instead of talking to him as if he doesn't know anything at all at all. Men don't like to feel like they are novice. Stop feeling like you are the Madame Tuno, like you, are, you know so much, like you are his teacher. You are not. Even, you know, there are some women that are more intelligent than their husbands. Are you aware? I'm not a feminist. Don't be shouting yes. <laughs> do you understand? It's just that's, just, that's just the way it is. But you do not, your submission is still there. That you know that, you, you know that this man, you, you seem to have a better level of understanding than him. You don't begin to rule over him because you have not been given that place. There's a reason God placed a man above the woman. So you still need to submit. If you are going to say anything to him and you want him to take it, you will need to ask God for wisdom on how to say it to him that he will take it. If he wears the shirt and puts it down, carry it. You know some men, when they wear the shirt, they'll hang it somewhere. You know that the next day is going to come and wear it. Pick it from there and wash it and clean it for him. Before the next day, quickly wash it, put it under the phone, let it dry. Before he gets there, if he looks at the shirt, he will know somehow that this is not the way the thing used to be. So you're already trying to help without even saying anything to him. He pulls his socks and dump it there. Pick it, wash it, find a way to dry it. He's not smelling properly. Go and buy um, body spray and give to him. If he says, what's this one? Is it my bed? No, it's not your bed. I love it. That's why I bought it. Give it to him. Do we understand? He's not, his, his mouth is not smelling properly. You don't go about it. He wants to kiss you. Maybe he's a married person, for instance. And he wants to give you a kiss in the evening. And you're like, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg. I beg, leave me alone. This is your mouth. You are not going to help him, oh. You are just going to be creating issues in the home every time. I will advise that you go and buy a mouthwash or you buy a good toothpaste like Long Reach. Find a way to get a good toothpaste. Why are you changing my toothpaste? This is better. Find, so just find something to say to help. He doesn't understand, but you know what you are trying to get at. Do we understand? Thank you. All right. Um, we're already behind time. The time is never enough. All right. To explain what I mean by drama... There are people that are called drama queens, and normally um, the female gender is prone to drama. What does it mean to be dramatic in the context that I'm teaching? It means, most of the time, a desire to create conflict so that you can feel emotionally relevant. So they create unnecessary conflict, and out of that conflict, they find some reason for you to now say, Oh, okay, my sweetheart, I'm so sorry, I love you, and things like that. They get some satisfaction from creating unnecessary conflict. All right? So men don't like people being dramatic. For instance, it's easier to say, um, we've been apart for the whole day. You didn't even send me a message. It's like you are not missing me. Right? Then the man comes home, he's tired, you don't know what has happened in the office. He, as he's entering here, welcome home. Then he's wondering. We were talking normally before we left the house. Then he calls you, honey bunch, what's the problem? Please, please, I'm not in the mood. Your food is on the table. Eat if you, if you don't want to eat, go and sleep. <laughs> That's drama. You understand what I'm saying? The guy is now wondering, what is the issue for God's sake? It's easier as he, as he comes to the door, it's better to just say, Abba now. Give me a peck. I've been missing you. You didn't remember your wife. It's easier than to create a scenario out of it. Then he comes to kneel down by the bed. I'm sorry now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please, 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 please. I'm sorry now. Smile now. <laughs> the guy is tired. He will be tired. Some men don't have the strength for drama. 
Do you understand what I'm saying now? Yes, sir. All right. That brother that said, yes, sir, let's check him out. <laughs> How do you help a father that is a drug addict and is adulterous? Huh? Pray for him, oh. Keep praying for him. And as much as lies within you, keep showing him scriptures. As the same with the woman that is married to an unbelieving husband, you as a child, you can show your parents Jesus. Just like Pastor CJ said, it got to a point her parents saw that she sold out. The problem most of the time is, for, especially for us young people, you want to turn your parents to Christ, and at home you are disobedient. You are unruly. Your life does not portray Jesus. Sleep in the night and wake up at 9 a.m. And you are the eldest child. And then when you wake up at that 9 a.m., the house is unkept. You start speaking in tongues. Go, 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 go. There's no, nothing you will tell your mother that will make her love Jesus. That this Jesus you are selling is a lie. All right? So pray and then model Christ by your life. This question is about prayer. See, he has been struggling with personal prayer. He has tried everything he knows to do and sought help, but it's still not working. Bro, go and listen to my teachings on prayer. They're on Telegram. Yeah. They'll be very helpful. Yeah. They'll be very helpful. But ask the Holy Spirit to help you. It's the Holy Spirit that helps us. The Bible says he helped our infirmities. Can we celebrate our pastors? I don't want to stretch us. There are some powerful questions on YouTube. Some very, very serious questions on YouTube. Serious questions. While we are sorting the pulpit out, let me just see if I can run through some. Our YouTube followers, you are with us and we love you. Thank you for joining us. Can we celebrate our online brethren? Um, let me just take some. What makes a marriage recognized by God? Can a man and a woman get married without the knowledge of their parents, where their parents are non-believers and they don't support their union? Pastor Efe, what do you think? 30 seconds. Their parents are unbelievers, they don't support their marriage. Can they get married? They should be patient with their parents, okay? Yeah, they should be patient. My, in fact, my wife was just saying that we're, we're a practical example of, of that. Yes. Uh, the, the truth is, whatever God does, whatever is born of God, we overcome. Uh, and in, in our patience, we saw God prevail. Uh, and at the end of the day, we are married today. So if truly what you are about is of God, then trust God to, to touch the hearts of the, your parents. You, your, your par no, even though they are not saved, you, you, your parents are still your parents. There's still an authority they have over you. So they are blessing. It's important. It's very important. So with, with prayers, yes, and give them time. And of course, with your good conduct, do not be, show yourself rebellious to them. Uh, let, them let them see your willingness to respect their authority. Uh, and if God is involved, like we said, ultimately, what if the they will favor you. never come around? If they never come around, uh, that, that, that one is hard. Uh, yeah, because I have a case. Yes. Um, the, the lady's parents never came around. Okay. And they had been waiting. In fact, they had started dating or they had started their courtship yes. while they were in university. Wow. And parents were aware, but the parents kept, kept insisting mm. that the problem they have with the union is that the brother is from River State and they are from Akwaibom or Calabar, I can't remember. Yes. That was the issue, not that they were not Christians or whatever. Mm. So that, that kind of issue, they mm. waited, waited, youth service, yes, they had been waiting, and the girl insisted that she knows it's the will of God, and she went ahead and married. Wow. The parents came around later. Came around later, yes. wow. Parents that happens. Yes. yes, so because my, mm. my, my thinking is if the issue that the parents are holding on to onto, yes. is not something that is scriptural, because I believe that God can speak to your parents too. Yes. Your parents not consenting to the marriage can also be the voice of God. 
God telling you to take a second look at it. But if the issues that they are raising are not deeply rooted issues, I don't like the guy's head, for instance, and you wait, 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 if you are sure it's the will of God and you have, because in this lady's case, in this lady's case, her pastor, their pastors were involved and they joined them. So, here and there. Why, why are we putting off past surface? Uh, sorry, I'm the one that put it off unconsciously. Okay. Yeah, so that, that is one in... It's, yes, it's, one, it's not, uh, it's not, not always it's not, the, the yeah, case. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that nobody runs with that uh, mindset. This man sitting here, he has a testimony in this regard too. Of course, it's me and him that went to uh, the meeting. <laughs> I just remembered. Yes. So uh, the cases I've seen is that God always pulls through. But I've also seen, I, if I know of a pastor who they did that, because the reason the parents were giving were well, just, yes. it didn't make sense. Uh, okay, can if a man continues to be unfaithful, if a man continues to be unfaithful, should I continue to wait in the marriage? The Lord has already said that you can live on the case of sexual immorality. So our sister that asked that question, please, if the Lord is telling you to walk away, if you can forgive. But somebody perpetually being unfaithful is a sign that the person is out to hurt you. You know what I mean by being unfaithful? It's committing adultery. Yeah. So you can leave. Please should two Christians undergo premarital tests such as HIV, hepatitis, A and B, C and fertility tests or should we enter into the marriage with faith alone in that area? No, please do test. Exactly. Preach to your neighbor quick. Say do test. Oh. test oh. Mm. Did they do test? Oh. Um... All right, brethren on YouTube, please forgive us. The questions are so many. We will take all of them out. And please, if you don't follow us on Telegram, please look for RCN Warrior on Telegram. We are going to answer all these, your questions. So please, we will take the questions and then we will write our responses. I will share with the pastors. And whatever responses we can provide, we will provide to you. Rise on your feet tonight and begin to talk to the Lord. Begin to talk to the Lord now begin to talk to the Lord now. We particularly want to lay hands. If you are online, whether you are on Telegram, you are on MixLR, or you are on YouTube, you are having a challenging marriage. Please just indicate now what you want us to pray about and we will pray for you tonight. If you are here, your parents have a marriage that seems to be going through a difficult time, can you pray for them now? You are a young person here, you are single, you are not yet in a marriage and there are areas that are worrying you that are troubling you you're already looking at them that they are troublesome and you want hands laid on you concerning these matters i'm going to i'm just giving you two minutes to talk to god and in the next three minutes i will invite you so that hands can be laid on you i feel i need to be prayed for i feel that this is an area that i need divine intervention urgently I am trusting God that this year will be the year that I get married. I'm trusting God that God will settle me in a family this year. I'm trusting God to speak to me concerning my partner. I want the Lord to open my ears. I'm ready to marry, but I want God to open my ears so I can hear him and know his will. You will be prayed for tonight. But just speak to God quickly that the things you have heard in these three days will not be wasted. That he will forge you into a mighty weapon in his hand you will have a kingdom marriage a kingdom marriage if you've been hurt before if you are bleeding in your emotions and you want to be healed tonight hands will be laid on you and then healing will take place in your emotions you are wounded maybe you've been wounded even within the christian space met a christian sister met a christian brother and you were stabbed and you've not healed god will heal you tonight paraventure your character is so damaged and you don't believe anything good can come out of your life so low self-esteem identity crisis whatever name they bear tonight is a night of healing i spoke about a, a young lady or a woman that has been feeling abandoned the lord was speaking to me about the spirit of abandonment 
if you are the one on site or online the lord wants to hold you in an embrace tonight tonight is that night pray now brethren pray now i know we've taken time the bosses are waiting just open your mouth and talk to god Lendi Kabila Scabra Sadaya Etelebando Scabriando Kabila Sata Lebra Sata Bola Brando La Kabila Dosa Landi Kabila Talo Sabriata Labaras Let the rivers, the healing streams, burst forth tonight. Let them burst forth tonight. The characters are healed, hearts are healed. Broken relationships, families are healed. Broken marriages are healed tonight. Isabora Mariata, Iskebriado Kobea. Let low self esteem collide with the Holy Ghost tonight. Let every identity crisis collide with the Holy Ghost tonight. Let the heavens of our individual lives be opened. Seeing eyes, hearing ears, hearts that understand, let them be given to us today, for it is the Lord that created them all. Sabaradai, those that are due for marriage and they want to settle this year according to the will, the plan, and the purpose, and the calendar of God, we shift them tonight. Lord, we shift them tonight, on site, online, anywhere. We shift them tonight. Every number that has been positioned for every father's joy, we dislocate that relationship now. We banish Nabal from our, our line. We banish Nabal from our lives. We banish Nabal from our space. Thank you, Father. Ora baka bola mai. The streams of healing have begun to flow. You want hands laid on you? Come quick now. Come quick now. Come quick now. You are hurting. You are broken. Or there are areas of your life that you want God to heal. Come quick now. Even if you are online. If you are online, just type it there that I, I need healing. We'll pray for you from here. Come now, come now. You can stand for your parents. You can stand for them. Broken families, let them be healed tonight. Pastors. Those of you online, I stretch forth my hands to you now. I pray that the Lord begins to touch. He touches your marriage. He touches your home. He touches your husband. He touches your wife. I speak an end to physical abuse. I speak an end to emotional abuse. That case of abandonment, the Lord brings you comfort. The Lord opens up the bowels of love to you. You are healed. Healed in your mind. Healed in your body. Healed in your thoughts. You are healed. You that is due for marriage, we shift you by fire now. We shift you by mercy. We shift you by grace. We said this year, the Lord will show mercy. This year, the Lord will wipe your tears, your loneliness. The Lord will answer with a companion. Your loneliness, 
The Lord will reward you with his son or with his daughter. This year, your joy will be full. La Prescadios. As hands are being laid on people in this auditorium, hands are being laid on you online. The Lord stretches forth his hand to you. The Lord stretches forth his hand to you. Yokes are breaking now. I'm beginning to see yokes break. Yokes are breaking. Yokes are breaking. Demonic strongholds are scattering things that have held you bound, that have not allowed you to move into your marital union. Yokes, demonic activity, fighting marriages, fighting Christian homes. That devil is bound. That yoke is broken. That burden is lifted. There's a river, there's a river, there's a river, there's a river. People are getting overwhelmed in that river. There's a river, there's a river, there's a river. I can see that river. I can see that river. It's in this auditorium. It's in people's homes. It's in people's families now. It's in people's marriages now. I see that river. That river that make it glad the city of God. I speak to a woman tonight. Joy is coming back to your home. Joy is coming back to your home. Joy is coming back to your home. La pia 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 pia. Iscabo la paria. Ete parus. Iscabo cabo cabo. Cabo cabo cabo. Cabo cabo cabo. Le capiata. Talos. You are good, you are kind. I have never seen your kind. I'm devoted to your will and forever to your name. You are good, you are kind. I have never seen your kind. I'm devoted. Just quickly, everybody. I want you to pray one prayer as we're about to break camp tonight. Lord, deliver me from evil and wicked men. If you are a sister, pray that prayer. If you are a brother, pray it. Deliver me from evil and wicked women. 
Pray quickly now. Pray quickly. If you are a brother, evil or wicked women, they will not know my space. My walls will not become broken down. No, my walls will not be broken down. No, no. He says, Jerusalem shall be as a city without walls because the Lord shall be a fire round about her. Oh, thank you, Jesus. There's no time tonight. I feel, I feel mighty things happening in this place. But there's no time. No time, no time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. Bring your offerings out while you are standing. If you are online, the accounts will be displayed for you to give your offering. If you are on site and you don't like to carry cash, you can give your offering electronically. Please feel free to use the account details. Have you been blessed these three days? The next Brothers and Sisters Conflict Conclave will be holding sometime in June. So prepare yourself for a wonderful encounter. Abby, we should not hold it again. So we'll hold in June and we'll go deeper and we'll trust God to show us mercy. So give your offerings. It's Wednesday. It's our normal regular service. So please give bountifully as the Lord has blessed you. You can use the account details on the screen. Remember, there is a vigil on Friday. Friday is our vigil, 10 p.m. We come here to pray. And then on Sunday, we have Bible study. Remember, we are still dealing with the matters of whom shall we send. If you have not listened to the first three parts of the teaching, they are on our telegram handle. Part one was taught by Pastor Efe. Part two was taught by me. Part three was taught by Pastor Efe. I will be wrapping up the series on Sunday. So please invite your brothers, invite your friends, invite your colleagues, invite your enemies. We trust God to show us great mercy on Sunday. Pray with me. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they do comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anoints my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. We'll see you on Friday or see you on Sunday. The buses are available outside, please. There's a bus to Agbaru, there's a bus to PTI Road, there's a bus to Udu. Please use the one that is nearest to your location. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you.